the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. This thirsting of my soul Bread of heaven, fill me till I want no more. Just the voices, all the instruments stop. Fill my cup, Lord, from the depth of your heart. Bread of heaven, fill me till I want no more. Fill my cup. This is why we are here tonight. Bless us. Let it not just be one of those gatherings. We have come because you will give us an experience tonight that is new, that is fresh. Lord, we submit to you. Build us, mold us, teach us. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please be seated. It's good to have us here again. And tonight we're going to be considering something that I consider very, very serious. And I like our hearts to be opened as we trust God to bless us. Hallelujah. There's one thing that I know for sure, that we are changing, and we are rising from glory to glory. And a day will come when we will become fit to carry this banner of the kingdom across the nations. And in that day, we will not be small. The least among us will be as mighty as David. Hallelujah. It's always challenging when you are through the period of training. There is no comfort about training. You are built, you are equipped, you are trained, you are pruned. But when God is done with you, he will present you as a masterpiece. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I've been thinking for a while, and um, what I want to talk about tonight is a very serious issue. And um, I think that it has plagued the body of Christ for too long. And I trust that God will grant us grace. It's not a teaching we can exhaust tonight wherever we stop. We'll stop and pray. Hallelujah. When I began my walk with God, I knew from the first time, volume mic, that there was a difference between just being a nominal Christian, Sunday to Sunday Christian, Bible study Christian, 
and one who has a passion, a desire, and a resolve to seek the Lord and to pursue him with everything. I saw what looked like Christianity, but I was not satisfied. And I knew that there had to be more. And I began to explore. I read the books of great men like Watchman Nee. I read materials of people like Peter Tan. I read the books of Kenneth Hagin. I studied God's generals, revivals, in a bit to find out that spiritual ingredient that is responsible for a life of fire, for a life that is not cold at all. Hallelujah. And I discovered a few things, and I'll be sharing some of them with us tonight. Hallelujah. In my opinion, I think that the, the greatest disaster that can happen to a man is not, um, is not sickness. In fact, it's not even demonic oppression. As bad as these things are. I think that, in my opinion, the greatest disaster that can happen to a man is that you walk in error or you do not press through spiritual things to attain the full stature of that which can be available for you in the spirit. I once heard the story, I think it's a popular story in the Christian faith, about a man who boarded a ship and part of that ship there was a package for his meal. Have you heard that story? And the man was more than grateful to get into the ship. And for days he was scrounging the little um, food that he held. And his table was vacant. And when he was almost dying, he was told that there had been provision for more. This is how it is with many believers. We do not know that there can be more, that our Christian experience can become richer, that we can become a lot spiritual than we are. And, and that which I seek to teach tonight will help us to understand this so that we do not just get born again and stand at the gate of the kingdom and not press deeper. Hallelujah. Now, according to scriptures, please write, the Bible reveals to us, spiritually speaking, that there are three categories of people, three types of man, as far as it has to do with our walk with God. The Bible reveals to us clearly that at any given point in time, you will find three kinds of people. Number one is what the Bible calls the natural man. The natural man. Number two, the Bible calls this second kind of man the carnal man. The carnal man. Number three, he calls the third kind of man the spiritual man. And this is very interesting. Please follow me. So the Bible tells us that when God is speaking through the word, he's speaking to three kinds of people. There are words that are directed to natural people. There are words that are directed to carnal people. There are words that are directed to spiritual people. And I believe that one of the challenges in the body of Christ is that we have not been accurately taught what I call the path of spiritual progress. The transitions from the natural man, the exact spiritual requirement that it takes for you to leave the realm of a natural man to the next phase. And that when you are in that second phase, 
many of us have not been taught exactly the spiritual pathway that transforms men from being carnal to being spiritual indeed. Hallelujah. And I truly am convinced that part of the reason why many believers are not strong in the spirit and cannot do much for the kingdom is because they have not been taught the spiritual pathway that transits men from being carnal to being spiritual indeed. Now, it's very sad that we don't agree over many things in the body of Christ. And we just thank God for his grace and his faithfulness. I think that one of the things that we all agree over in the body of Christ is the condition of being born again. If you confess Jesus Christ, you confess, you believe that God raised him from the dead, you are saved. Every sect, every denomination believes that and there is no argument about that. The moment that you satisfy that condition, you are accepted across every denomination. But after that, we almost don't agree on anything again. And so there has been confusion through the years as to the exact path of spiritual progress. Hallelujah. And tonight, the teaching is an attempt to bring us into that understanding. I truly believe that this holds the key to our deeper and our richer work with God. I read a book by a man who was acclaimed to be the 21st century prophet, a man called A.W. Tozer. The Pursuit of God. Powerful book. These were men whose dimensions of spiritual understanding was amazing. I have read many books. I have been built by so many people in the body of Christ. But there are certain people that their teachings and their spiritual paradigm has left a mark upon my life that will never be erased. Their understanding about God is so accurate. When you study their writings, you know that these people encountered God. Hallelujah. There are so many books in the body of Christ attempting to answer different questions about the pursuit of God. And the challenge is that, you see, when hunger meets error, it becomes a very unfortunate thing in the spirit. There are many believers who are hungry. We come to God, we come to church, and we say, I am thirsty. Lord, reveal more. You see, when you are hungry, you are like a baby whose mouth is opened. Anything that can fill you, you will take it and swallow it sincerely. Hallelujah. And many of us, that's the journey that begun the error that we have come into. We, have, we delved into it sincerely. When we got born again, there were probably no good Christian groups and fellowships around us to build us accurately. And so everything that looked like light, we ran to it and we poured our lives to receive it. And that little that we had is what we are holding on to today. But the unfortunate part is that some of what we received is not the accurate truth. So I sincerely pray from the depths of my heart that God will open our eyes so that our spiritual progress will be accurate and that at the end of our journey we will not have regrets as to why we did not attain the full stature of being spiritual men. And the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. And so we have learned a lot of things. And um, I have seen that there is a cancer that is eating believers up. And that cancer, in one word, is called the flesh. It's a cancer 
that has been responsible for the downfall of many mighty men. Please open your heart tonight because the Lord is going to talk to you very seriously. Hallelujah. Everyone say the flesh. We are going to examine what is this spiritual cancer that is able to impede people and stop them from becoming spiritual. Grant us grace in the name of Jesus. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Come and make my heart your home. Come and be everything I am and all I know. Search me through and through till my heart becomes a home for you. If you know the song, just sing it one more time. Come and make my heart your home. Come and be everything I am and all I Search me through and through till my heart becomes a home for you. First Corinthians 2 from verse 14. Verse 14. In fact, let's start from verse 13. First Corinthians 2, let's start from verse 13. Which things also we speak, not in the words of man's wisdom, that man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. 14. Everyone read. One to read. Stop. So the Bible tells us there is a man called what? The natural man. But the natural man cannot receive what the things of the spirit why for they are foolishness unto him neither can he know them because spiritual things are spiritually discerned are you following me now so this is the first kind of man the bible seeks to explain to us he is called the natural man and the bible gives us certain traits it doesn't leave us in confusion to guess who that man is. It says the natural man is one who has not yet sustained the capacity to understand spiritual things. They are foolishness unto him. He cannot know them because he has not been quickened to discern spiritual things. In one word, the natural man is one who has not met Jesus Christ. The natural man is what we call the unbeliever. I don't want to use that word because there are Christians that are still unbelievers. Hallelujah. So the natural man is one who has not met the Lord Jesus Christ. He has not come to the cross. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the way. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. So the natural man is one who has not truly had the encounter.
encounter of regeneration. The word regeneration comes from the word regene. To record you again. Regene. It's a new encoding. A changing of your spiritual configuration. Hallelujah. That's the first kind of man. And the Bible says for those kinds of people, there is nothing spiritual that ever makes sense to them. Hallelujah. They consider the faith work foolishness. They consider every spiritual activity foolishness. Some of us were like that before Christ found us. Alienated from the commonwealth of Israel. The commonwealth of Zion. Hallelujah. Everything that was of God was, an, it was a thing of mockery. We laughed at spiritual things. This man has an eternal destiny. The name of the place is hellfire. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Even if this man has been in church all his life, even if his father is a pastor, even if they baptized him in water, for as long as he has not met Jesus Christ, he is going to hell if he dies. Is there any confusion about that? So that we can move forward. Any confusion? The natural man has an eternal destiny. He is going first to hell and will later be relocated to the lake of fire. Hallelujah. That means if you are here and you have not met Jesus Christ, I wish it were a lie, but it's true. You are going to hell. If you don't repent, there is no other way to say it. I'm, I'm very sorry. I would have said you will go to a place that is not nice. It would have been a nice way. But let me tell you the truth and take me seriously. The Bible says this. I am the way. I am the truth. Can we get back to the basics of Christianity? I am the line. Not your pastor. Not your prophet. Not anointing oil. Are you getting what I'm saying? Placing an anointing oil on you does not make you a Christian. Soaking you in water in baptism does not make you a Christian. I, I, is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Because we need to redefine the condition for true salvation. A prophet of God speaking a word over you to say your sins are forgiven does not take you to heaven. Hello? I want all of us to get to heaven. So I want us to probe so that if you belong to this category, and your conviction about your being saved is because of some of these things I'm saying. Let's clean up the air so that you will know. There is what we call, they used to teach us in Sunday school, called assurance of salvation. Did they teach you? Not salvation. Assurance of salvation. That you can know that if the trumpet sounds today, by the way, there is a real trumpet and it will sound Let's be careful as we progress spiritually and we seek to edit some of these things out. I hear men of God who speak and say there's nothing like the book of life. You know that statement? Write my name in the book of life. Yeah, forget it. There's nothing like that. <laughs> we will know one day but I can tell you there is a book of life. The Bible says books were opened and another book, a master book was opened. And the name of that book, it didn't leave us to any theological guessing. He said the name of that book is the book of life. And whosoever's name, pastor, apostle, koinonia member, prayer band member, revivalist, whosoever's name was not found in that book. The Bible tells you that you are cast into the lake of fire. It's as simple as that. What's that man's song? It's your name in the book of life. 
serious question. Is your name? Sing it. Is my name? See, let me tell you. You know, there are many believers who think that your confidence is equal to salvation. I won't go to hell. I'm going to heaven. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. If you are not saved, brothers and sisters, hear me. There is a name for you. The Bible calls you what? The natural man. This is not my message. I'm just digressing to press it in so that you will know and you will care. Brothers and sisters, I know that we have been taught not to scare people with the revelation of judgment that there is judgment day. Don't scare people so that their coming to Christ will not be out of fear. But the only issue is that it is true. Brothers and sisters, listen to me. Heaven and earth will pass away. But not one word, not one word will fail. I really want us to truly, truly, before we even progress, examine our salvation. The Bible says to examine ourselves so that you are sure that if Jesus comes today, he will make heaven. If you know right now that if the trumpet sounds, you are going to heaven, stand up. If you are not sure, no problem. I'm serious. We are not playing games in this place. Please, you know that we are very serious. If you are sure that if the trumpet sounds right now, right now as we speak, you are going, you know we can fake it. Hallelujah. That if the trumpet sounds now, right now, together we are going to be with Jesus Christ in the air that is one of the greatest assurance you are sure you are going to graduate but that is inferior to your eternal destiny you are sure you are going to get married you are sure you are going to be healed you are sure you are going to be delivered but brothers and you are even sure you will be successful but can I be sincere with you if you are not sure of your salvation, it's time to deal with it. And I'm going to talk to you. I will tell you what the condition to make heaven is. Please and please, I owe you that responsibility under God. Thank you for giving to the Lord. Keep standing. I am alive. That was changed. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I am so in the course of ministering. I have had the privilege to stand before people a few minutes before they died. I have had the privilege to comfort families that have been bereaved. Some families of members here. Some families around that I'm connected to. Hallelujah. I've had the opportunity to hold the phone and hear families cry as their loved ones pass on. I've had the opportunity to look at people for the last time. I've had advanced knowledge where God told me this person is not going to make it. He's going to die. The Bible says if our hope is only in this life, we are of all men most miserable. If you've never thought about this thing this year, I want you to think about it for one minute. Jesus Christ is truly coming back. Please, in case you have been told that it will not happen, let me guarantee you there is an event that is going to happen in this earth. And every prophecy, every single prophecy that needs to, be, to come to pass 
for the coming of Jesus Christ has been fulfilled. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Please take it seriously. Every prophecy. There are people who have had visions of the coming of Christ. There are people who have had visions. I'm just reminding you that there is more to this life. This physical life that you see. And as you walk up and down your daily activity, if you are not sure that if Jesus Christ comes, we will be caught up. Let me tell you how it will happen. Please sit down. Everybody open your Bible. First Thessalonians, please. Paul had a revelation of what is going to happen and I'm going to show you. First Thessalonians 4. We are talking about the natural man. As far as I'm concerned, this is the most important thing. The natural man should know. First Thessalonians 4. From verse 13. 4 verse 13. Please let's hurry up so that we can beat time. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for salvation. Everyone look up. It's projected. Paul is talking to the church in Thessalonica. He said, but I would not have you to be ignorant. That means part of the revelations of the kingdom Paul wants us to have is the knowledge about how the coming of Christ is going to be. Brethren, so he's speaking to believers, concerning them which are asleep, that's those who have died. That ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. Verse 14. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so also, which sleep in Jesus, God will bring with him. Verse 15. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord. So Paul is not speaking his opinion. He's speaking by the word of the Lord. That which we are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord. That means the day that Jesus Christ is going to come, there will still be people who will be alive in the earth. Are you getting me? Not everyone is going to have died as in gone to the grave. So he's giving us, Paul is painting a picture on how the rapture will be. Verse, verse 16. For the Lord himself for who? The owner of the earth. The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of the archangel. Now which of the archangels we are not told exactly. But the Bible tells us Paul was speaking that on that day Jesus himself will descend from the heaven of heavens and will come upon this very physical earth. And it says there will be a shout, the voice of an archangel, and with the trump of God. That means a trumpet is going to sound. A shofar will blow. And the first thing that will happen in that great ceremony is that the dead in everybody say dead in one more time so it's not only those who are alive in Christ a man can also be dead in Christ that he served God with his whole life and he believed and accepted the lordship of Jesus Christ I bring you a message of hope. For those of you who have lost loved ones, brothers and sisters, if they gave their heart to the Lord Jesus Christ, there is a name for them. The Bible says they are dead but in Christ. That means a day will come, there will be a glorious reunion. Hallelujah. So the dead in Christ will be the first to rise. 17. 
then we which are alive and remain shall do what? We shall be caught up with them in the clouds. Let me explain to you what will happen. All of this that you see will happen in split seconds. Hallelujah. Split seconds of earth's time. It will be faster than the speed of light. There will be that sound. There's no time I would have shown you that unbelievers are not going to hear that sound. Because he, Jesus gave us a revelation. He said, my sheep hear my voice. That means if you didn't hear it, it was not for you. It's as simple as that. Is that in your Bible? <laughs> the Bible says two people will be lying down. Two roommates in Ribadu will be lying down. And one will be taken and leave the stubborn roommate who is not paying attention to the things of God and thinks I don't care. You get up and say, uh -uh, where did my roommate go to? We have checked out of this earth. A day is coming. The greatest catastrophe that has happened to the earth it's not all of the tsunami and the disappearance. Imagine how many pilots are going to go. You think they will stay? Once you hear that sound, you are leaving. The sound does something to your spirit, man. At once, all the graves, that was a revelation that was adumbrated in Ezekiel 37. People who have been maimed, Jews that were killed by Adolf Hitler, Bones that have been scattered. Matthias that were beheaded at once. That sound. That sound will do a quickening. The same way Christ was raised from the dead. The Holy Ghost will demonstrate his sovereignty at its best. To resurrect every man who is dead in Christ. Within a split second. And they will rise up with glorified bodies. Watch this. And that time, some of us who are alive, I pray that it happens during koinonia. While we are seated, maybe we are worshipping. All of a sudden, I will leave my Bible for you. My phone. Hallelujah. We will leave the drums, keyboard, there will still be a few people seated and they wonder what is happening. Those who laugh at us right now and laugh at our fanatism for the kingdom and think that life is all about money and cars and houses huh? and marriage and will not give priority to spiritual things. I am not telling you a fairy tale. We are closer to the coming of Christ right now than before Koinonia started. And it's a very good news. If it's a bad news for you, you are the natural man. It is not supposed to be a bad news. When people die, we write transition. It's a transition. So we who are alive, all of a sudden, this body that is limited suddenly immortality is perfected upon this body we will no longer carry this material the clothes that we will wear will no longer be removed there will be robes they are called garments of praise they are garments in the spirit and we will join the king of kings his feet is not going to touch the earth he will stand him. He will come with his own cloud. His own realm. Mm. And all of a sudden you will see your grandfather. You will see all the missionaries that were wounded in Nigeria. The ones who were killed in Calabar. The ones that were killed in different crises. We see all kinds of things. And together we will arise. And for the first time you will look at the earth. From heaven's perspective. And truly see that it is shadow. Every time we are on the air. I have the privilege to look down. And you see houses. 
like you know how children make toys whereas somebody will say i must build this thing if not i won't trust you from heaven's perspective people steal so that they can build that little object and you see people moving like ants that is from from a view in the sky imagine how god looks at everyone and he said, if I don't build this house, oh Lord, you wait. And he's saying, are you not wise? Have you not heard that there are mansions in heaven? It was not a prophetic statement. There are real mansions. There are people who have gone there. There are mansions. There are mansions. We will be caught up. We will leave all the countries. They will elect themselves. They will fight themselves. There will be a lot of vacancy. ABU Senate. No more admission. Some of your lecturers will come for lecture that morning. Only to find out that CNN. Will carry the most shocking news. Ever seen in human history. This day. Will put it new nigeria punch this nation massive disappearance of people all of a sudden it will occur to those you preach to who laughed at you that this, this person said this by the time they are saying it we will wave this earth goodbye i look forward to that time it's a very good experience do you know what it means that you are relieved from this body of sorrow. No thinking about all of these kinds of things. It's making some of you afraid. Because preachers have run away from it. Because they are not sure they are going to heaven. Don't talk about it. We are already going. We must talk about it. You talk about your house. You are hoping for break or strike or something so that you will run home. This world is not my own. Remember that country music. Powerful songs. Right now we dodge them. We sing all kinds of songs. I must make it. God is holding my hand and I must make it. These are the kinds of songs we write. Nothing at all that reminds us that we are living this realm. This is already a message. For someone, this is, your, this is your word from the Lord tonight. That you should sit down and think about your life. I can stand as a preacher and deceive men. But on that day, all of a sudden you will see bishops and pastors still in the earth. And the members will say, Pastor, you say, please don't. The Bible will once again become the bestseller. Because everybody whether you believe in Christ or not, it will no longer be an instrument of devotion. It will be the road map for the next level of prophecy. Every church on earth will be jam-packed. At that point, every business will close their shop by force. When there is nobody you must, whether you are selling tire, whether you are an iron bender, whatever you are doing, you will pack up your business and run to church. And everybody will sit in church hoping that that is the place where the rapture will happen. Whereas it has happened. All of a sudden. Within 24 hours. A strange man will appear on your TV. And you say. World calm down. It's true that some people have gone. But let there be peace. And the Bible calls him. The Antichrist. Not an Antichrist. He is the Antichrist. At that point, the Bible says, men will run and beg the mountain to fall on them. You are afraid of bicycle hitting your leg. But the Bible says, even death will run away. Death will say, I've tried. That's it. Mission accomplished. Yes, read your Bible. Men will run to the mountain. People will carry knives to kill themselves and will not die. The Bible says, the, in Revelation, 
I thought we'll be able to do it this year, but we may do it. You may not be able to do it this year. Eschatology, there is a whole teaching on it. A four-part series on the end time. Hallelujah. I'm just giving you... Am I boring you? <laughs> you better say no. Because this cannot be boring when your eternal destiny is tied to it. <laughs> Some of us, this is a revelation. God has been talking to you. Calm down with the issue of wanting to make it and think about your eternal destiny. Hallelujah. Churches will still be full. There will still be men of God doing live telecasts whereas the rapture has happened. Some will even be making altar calls. I mean what I'm saying and I'm very serious about it. Yet there are some people, some quiet mothers who have been praying like Anna the prophetess looking forward to the consolation when that happens some of the cleaners in our churches who we have disrespected before you know it they will leave the rag for you there and leave some of the house helps we have ill-treated they will go and leave all of us the door of cbn will be wide open to go and pack all the money all the security people the banks will be there the bulk room will be open go and pack and then you will hear that there is a new technology for buying and selling. The Antichrist will introduce a new code of conduct. Joshua Selman! For where? He has gone. And I will turn there. And I will see Lawrence. I will say you made it. Oh I pray that you will turn and see your father, your mother. And you say where is my sister? And there will be joy. No matter how antisocial you are, there must be joy because you will turn and see someone and you will suddenly turn and see the person who led you to Christ but has died. And you will look at him and we will all be young. No competition of I'm fine, you are not. We will all be fine. Leave this body with all the deficiencies that this realm brought for us and will arise in a glorified body. Question. Will your father be there? Will your mother be there? Yes, you may be there. There are people in my life, I'm sorry to say it, I know they will not be there. Based on the truth of God's word, they died without Jesus Christ. Some of them, we had the privilege to talk to them. And they didn't take it seriously. And they died. There are people you spoke to. They didn't know that you were so close. And they didn't listen. And they died. With my mouth. Will I make it known. That's why we have to preach. From the rising of the sun. Right until it's going down. I will sing. Of the mercies of the Lord. There will be churches. That more than half of the congregation will be dancing and singing praise and worship. And they are not gone. Because they never took seriously the issue of salvation. They thought it's a basic thing. There will even be men of God sharing revelations. And all of a sudden they will find out that the earth looks empty. The weight of the earth will reduce. Because people have left. Revelation says... That there was 30 minute silence in heaven. You know why? The, the shock in heaven. Because of the seven vials. That was about to be poured upon the earth. The Bible says one third of the vegetation of the earth. Will be destroyed. You were taught about ecosystems. Right in biology. Imagine what happens to the earth. When one third of the vegetation is destroyed. It's not a prophetic statement. It will happen. No buying indomie until the mark of the beast is there. No nothing. No matter how you hide. We have GPS. What do they call it? GPRS. GPS. They will find you. No hiding. The question I want to ask you right now. 
again is are you going to make it this is not to scare you what then is the condition to make heaven what condition transits you from being a sinner to being a righteous person in Christ Romans chapter 8. Sorry, chapter 10. I'll begin to read from verse 8. Romans chapter 10, verse 8. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Here's the condition. That if thou shalt what? Confess. Not assume. Confess. Verbalize. With your mouth. The Lordship of Jesus Christ. And if you believe it, that means it is possible to confess what you do not believe. Is that true? So, you must first believe in your heart that this is true. Jesus came and died. He shed his blood for my sins. He was given as a propitiation, as an exchange. What I could not do for myself. Jesus came as the ransom, the lamb that shed his blood for my sins. He said, if you believe in the Lord Jesus, and thou shalt believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead, what is the, the result? Thou shalt be saved. Next verse. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness. And then with your mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Has this happened to you? I know you have spoken. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. I believe in you. I believe in you. I believe you died. I believe you died. And you are pinching people all around. The Bible says, do you believe in your heart? Was it a sincere statement? Do you truly believe that Jesus died? Do you believe that he shed his blood? He took your place in death that you may take his place in life. Do you believe that he defeated sin? He defeated Satan? He broke the power of sin. Do you believe that he offers you new life? And if you believe it, have you acknowledged it? If you have not done that, if Jesus comes today, you are going to hellfire. Hallelujah. So before we continue, I'm going to give us five minutes. And I'd like us to pray from the depths of your heart, every one of us, and say, Lord, I commit myself. Commit myself. I want to be sure that on this day, this decision is true in my life. Jesus, Son of God. Pray. I believe in you. I believe in you. I call you my Messiah. Jesus, Son of God. I believe in you. Pray from the depths of your heart. I believe that Jesus died. Jesus, Son of God, I believe in you. Oh, I believe. I believe in life and in death. This becomes my conviction. Jesus, Son of God. I may not believe many things about the Christian faith, but I believe this one. Jesus. 
Jesus, Son of God, I believe in you. I believe in you. With my heart, I believe that Jesus died. Jesus paid the price. I believe the truth of God's word. I believe that Jesus came. He was born of the Virgin Mary. I believe that he suffered. I believe that he went to the cross. I believe he hung on that cross for me. I believe that he was pierced with those nails for my sins. I believe he said it is finished. I believe he was buried and he went to hell and collected the keys of death, hell and the grave. I believe that on the third day he resurrected. I believe that he's alive today and he offers me the gift of righteousness. Oh, and I've received it by faith. Jesus, Son of God. most important decision in your life when the road is called up yonder 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 When the road is called up yonder, when the road, when the road is called up yonder, when the road is called up yonder, I'll be there. In two minutes. I like you to cry for your family members that you know you know they are going to hell lift your voice and pray don't pretend it some of us our kind fathers are still going to hell when all is said and done when all is said and done your degree means nothing your prosperity means nothing when all is said and done when all is said and done there are some of our sisters going to hell brothers our relatives kind cousins well-meaning family members but as it is right now the truth of god's word is that they are going to hell pray for them Lord save them save them save them hell is real heaven is real whether you believe it or not Jesus is coming please pray for them in one minute I know we've taken time but this is too important what then are we doing Save their soul, oh God. Save their soul. Please pray for your father. Lord, let him not go to hell. Now that he's alive, there is still a chance. Pray for your drunkard brother. Lord, you have to do something about his salvation. Pray for your idol worshiping grandparents. Lord, they are kind. They love me. But they are going to hell. Save them, oh God. Are you praying? 
Let me tell you, this is all we do tonight. It is important. There is nothing that stops Jesus Christ from coming this night. The gospel of the kingdom is already being preached. There is nothing that stops Jesus Christ from coming tomorrow morning. Hallelujah. The last prayer point before we continue. Listen, look at me. I want to say something and I mean it from the depths of my heart. There are some of you here, the blood of your family members and your friends will be upon your head. Because you move around, you know Jesus and you love him, but you are afraid and ashamed. You don't want stigmatization. How can me, a fine girl, be involved in preaching? How can me, a bobo? All right, they are going to die. That's the problem. It has nothing with you being a preacher. And let me tell you, the Bible tells us that the rich man was in hell and he saw Lazarus. They communicated. You will be able to see your father and your mother. They will look at you. You will look at your roommates. You will look at people. You will see them. Let me tell you the truth. And they are going to ask you, they will say, Femi, you saw this thing. You didn't insist. You even asked me out. Yet you never preached to me. You taught me about prosperity. You taught me, many of us who are preachers here, the blood of many people will be upon our heads. We taught about dimensions of revival. We taught about divine health. Rema, we heal the sick. There were all kinds of demonstrations of the spirit. But they, we did not confirm whether our members are going to make it. We had building projects. Project 10,000. Excellence. There was table. You caught cake. We dressed well in suit. But the question is, in the final analysis, are you preaching to anybody? There are some of you, you have never opened your mouth to talk to anybody. You can share about revelation. You can share about marriage. You can give koinonia messages. You are on Facebook. You are on Twitter. You have all kinds of things. God gave you an opportunity. You have recharge card. Let me tell you something. In 2000, and was it 3 or 4? I used to do something. I will never sleep until I send text messages to at least 10 or 15 people talking to them about the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't know them. I would just be calling numbers at random. I think that was when 2003, 4. That was when they started this GSM thing. I would just type in numbers at random and send. Just type a message about salvation. Not a condemning message, but a sincere message. There are some of you, you can make tracts. You are waiting until the day you become a Jew. Some of us, our Facebook pages have become platforms for, for gossiping and making all kinds of noise. Yet our loved ones are going to hell. You are interested in a relationship with a lady. You don't even know whether she's going to heaven or hell. All you know is she's fine. Continue. Hallelujah. And you are there. God gave you beauty. All kinds of guys are coming. You don't want to fall your hand. And you never talk to them about Jesus Christ. Some of you get up and you allow people. You come for coin on and you just say, I'm going. And they say, okay. And it never occurs to you that if you come for coin on and the trumpet sounds, you will never see them again. You have no ministry if souls are not being saved. You are not doing ministry. I don't care what you are doing. Our number one assignment is part of our mission statement. Massive salvation of souls. Not salvation of souls. Massive salvation of souls. When I see a man that needs to hear about Jesus and God grants me the grace, I will speak. 
If I cannot speak, I will do something. What is wrong with you going to the studio and going to pay 10 or 20,000 naira and just do a salvation message? You are not the name of any ministry. He said, what is the name of my own ministry? Must you have a ministry? Just go to the studio and do it a 20 minutes presentation of salvation. Or you and your friends contribute two, 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 two thousand, five or ten people, and just put it as an MP3. We put all kinds of useless things. Um, this is Joshua Selman. I'm about to release my debut track, Nonsense, when there is room to preach the gospel first. How many of our gospel songs carry direct salvation messages? Have you, seen, have you discovered the way we are quietly deviating? And nobody wants to attack the salvation thing. It looks old school. Right? It doesn't look very attractive. So I rather push success. I'm not against success, brothers and sisters. But I repeat, if Jesus comes, nobody is carrying a kaki out of this realm. Are you, are, are, you, are you aware of that? You are not going to carry any shirt. All of these things, you will drop it behind. Whatever you have in your account is useless. You won't carry your awards. You won't carry your degree. You won't carry your marriage certificate. Woe is me if I preach not the gospel. This is what drives me every day. I have dedicated my life, not just for ministry, to turn the hearts of many to righteousness. I don't care how much I'm misunderstood. I don't care how old school I sound when Jesus comes in the final analysis. Some of you are fellowship escorts. Some of you are pastors. When was the last time you truly preached? Do you know that we graduate people from Bible school and they don't know what the gospel is? They know the keys to wealth. They understand marriage counseling. Conflict resolution. How to raise money for church. But they know nothing about winning souls. One more time before I continue. I've, this thing has touched my heart. This thing has touched my heart. Because this is the core. The pivot. The pivot. Of our Christian experience. If God makes you a millionaire. And nobody is getting saved as a result of your millions. You will eat your money the day the church is raptured. If God gives you a platform. You have your small fellowship, your group. And you just feel we are only five. I think everybody is born again. Don't make assumptions. That's why I respect Papa E.E. Adeboe. If he holds a meeting between him and his wife. I'm sure he will still make an altar call. No assumption. No assumption. We preach powerful messages. And at the end of it, we don't care whether people are saved or not. One more time. Put a fire in my spirit. Let my mouth not be silent as far as preaching the gospel. Telling people that Jesus died for them. And that there is judgment if they don't pay attention. Lift your voice and pray in one minute. Some of you truly, when you started out with God, you were very serious as far as soul winning is concerned. You didn't even know that there was anything called anointing. But now you know that there is anointing. I will use everything that God has given me for the gospel. Pray. Prosperity, grace, the knowledge of graphics, my knowledge of media, my beauty. Sister, pray. Tired of taking men to hell. Now I need to begin to take men to heaven. I will use my voice to sing. And I will keep singing until people come to Jesus Christ. Many of you need to repent on behalf of your groups and ministries. 
open your mouth and ask the Lord for forgiveness. You've been doing a lot of activities, but they are not channeled towards soul winning. And you don't care. Open your mouth and pray. And say, Lord, my small fellowship in the village have not been preaching the gospel. I've been preaching many things. Not the gospel of salvation. Every other gospel is only useless or useful when the gospel of salvation has been preached. Some of us have little groups that we preach to occasionally. Where did you throw your evangelism zeal? It looked old school and you've thrown it for something new. The Bible says, ask for the ancient part. Please pray. Don't let my love grow cold. I'm crying out. Light the fire again. I need your discipline. I'm crying out like the fire again. Don't let my love grow cold. I'm crying out like the fire again. I need your discipline. I'm crying out like the fire again. I just feel God wants us to stop here and press on this issue tonight. Carnal believers and the rest, we have to we'll take on that one. Hallelujah. Whether you are going to kneel down or lie down in the next 10 minutes, I'd like you to write the names of five people that we are going to intercede for their salvation. If this is what we do tonight, go ahead and pray. Please cry to God. They must be saved. The natural man. I'm crying now. Write it. There is no man that Jesus cannot save. For as long as there is life, there is hope. Shake it about a rabbit, a rabbit, a rabbit, a rabbit, a rabbit, a rabbit, There is all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I made it. But it's all about you. Please write it down. All about you, Jesus. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. 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 It's all about you, Jesus. In the next five minutes i like you to pray in tongues like your life depends on it and say lord these five people must be saved i must see them in heaven lift your voice and begin to pray whether you want to kneel down cry whatever it is let there be a cry they must be born again Shake it, Baraba, Kata, Pregade, Baraba, 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 Baraba,
Rabakata preske pete kete bala bala labash. Rakapo shoto pekete le prekete le koto supa. My father will not go to hell. My father will not go to hell. My mother will not go to hell. Pray. Save my husband. Save my wife. Pray. When the trumpet sounds, I must see them in heaven. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. They must be saved. They may be non Christians, but I shall say they must be saved. Revelations 20. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. The Lord is imparting a genuine passion for souls. Yeah. Revelations 20. From verse 10. Revelations 20, verse 10. Listen, listen, and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophets are, and shall be tormented day and night forever. Next verse. And I saw a great white throne. I saw it. I saw it. And he that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was no place found for them. Verse 12. I don't know what gospel you have been heard, you have been preaching. I saw the dead, small and great, commissioners and houseboys, presidents and bike men, first class students. And those who did not pass jam, I saw them. I saw them. They stood before God. Every man must stand before God. And the books were open. What books? Your faithfulness in evangelism. Your giving for those who have taught you that your works of righteousness are not important. Here goes the Bible. The works of men will be tried by fire. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. Brothers and sisters, read the remaining part by yourself. One to read. And the dead were judged out of. That means there are things that are written. According to what? Next verse. And the sea gave up all the people who died by sea crash. And death and hell delivered all our uncles and aunties and politicians. It says, and they were judged 
every man according to their works 14 and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire and the bible says this is the second death let me show you something is there another verse go ahead verse 15 everyone read and hold on and what whosoever at that point your status will not matter again at that point your english your ordination will not matter your suit will not bail you out he said whosoever was not found written in the book of life there was no story end of discussion cast into the lake of fire whether it is your father whether it is your mother some of you if you don't pray you will watch your mother who gave birth to you you will watch her as the bible says depart from me and you will watch them cry to hell some of you will watch your uncles lift your voice and cry and say lord whatever it will take to stop them from going to this place of torment i cry tonight i love them too much i love my mother i love my father i love my brothers whosoever's name was not found in the book of life be the president be the governor whether you are a first class student two one student it will not matter again it won't matter how many parishes you have it won't matter how many rema you have whether you are a member of koinonia or not is irrelevant i will stand for myself you will stand for yourself and i saw books open and another book was open intercede for them lord send angels send angels to my house send angels give them dreams give them encounters with jesus in their dreams they must be born again Revelations 21 
verse 3 and I heard a great voice out of heaven saying behold the tabernacle of God is with men and he will dwell with them and they shall be his people and God himself shall be with them and be their God verse 4 and God finally brothers and sisters a day will come when all is said and done in this life God will wipe away the tears the tears of mockery some people died out of cancer some died out of HIV some were martyred they were standing for Jesus while they were killed the Bible says on that day that tears the tears of mockery holy holy the Lord will wipe that tears the tears of the pain that you have to go through on account of the gospel that men will not like you some of you would have been married since if you were not standing for God but because of your faith the Bible says God will wipe that tears and there shall be no more death no more obituary no more pain neither sorrow nor crying neither shall there be any more pain for the former things are passed away listen listen it's not enough that you are convinced that you will make heaven i'm still saying it we are going to pray there are some of our loved ones some of us come from backgrounds that are non-christians and some of our loved ones are still there we are going to pray and everyone will pray to give them divine visitations encounters with jesus christ let me tell you if jesus came to die an encounter is not too much to force any man to give his life to christ lift your voice and pray encounters appear to them in visions like Saul on his way to Damascus Lord, they will not die. Give them encounters. Give them encounters. Give them encounters. Rakata pakata badosh. Pray. Change my father. Change my mother. Some of them vow that they will never give their hearts to the Lord. I like you to pray. It can change. Some of them are traditional worshippers. Mention them by name. Mention them by name. Read your prayer request. Mention them by name. Mention them by name. Claim their salvation in the name of Jesus. Some of them are religious people. The truth is they are not born again. They are not born again. Some of them belong to sects that will take them to hell. Occultic sects. Pray for them. Give them an encounter. Hallelujah. hallelujah i'll never forget one of our sisters she was a member 
of the worship team. Hallelujah. I will never forget her touching testimony. Came from a completely non-Christian background. And she decided to give her life to Christ. When she gave her life to Christ, it was war. And gradually, gradually, the Lord started doing his thing in the family. The brother gave his life to Christ. And then I think the mother, and it was remaining the father, and this lady would not give up. I will never forget that night when she called me crying and jumping around chapel and said, can you imagine my father, my father gave his life to Christ. She was jumping. See, there are some hardened people you see. You know that humanly speaking, they will never be born again. Don't try the power of the Holy Spirit. Think of how you were. Some of you think of what God brought you out of. Then you will know that there is no man that God cannot change. There is no man. God has changed occultists. God has changed hardened criminals. Some of you, you know where God brought you out from. If God could change you, if God could change you, we are still going to pray. You are going to say, Lord, put your word in my mouth. Because some of you, it's just, you don't know what to say. But we are going to cry. Lord, let no one's blood be upon my head on that day. Put your word in my mouth. And grant me the boldness to declare the gospel. Go ahead and pray. Put your word in my mouth. Pray. Deliver me from shame. Deliver me from my ego. Deliver me from embarrassment. Hey, hey. Hey, hey. Are you praying from the depths of your heart? You must start with your family members before you think of crusades and outreaches. Start with your family members. They must be born again. They must be born again. Rabata gada bala da bos, shop brado gado bala da bos. Rabata kapreda gada bala da bos. Hallelujah. Listen, listen. There are many avenues, many avenues to turn the hearts of men to righteousness. Number one. The ministry of intercession there are some of you who pray a lot but all you are praying is oh god give me tea god give me bread add blue ban on the bread that's that's all our prayer if if listen if the scope of your christian experience there's we'll do it another day i really wanted to talk about the carnal man and then we, there, there are scriptures that I prepare to touch. We can't, we can't do that. Our time is already gone. The slave to the flesh. That is the man of the flesh that can really not please God. That is another dimension. Maybe we'll consider that next week. Hallelujah. That you, you, you write the names of people and you just go into fasting for one day and it's not for yourself how many of you have ever done that to fast and it's not for yourself if it's not for me that's the flesh that's the flesh if it's not for my marriage my my lifting my prosperity or that you go to prayer and say Lord you must save these souls and you are not just pretending it 
one thing that I know is that as much as God grants me grace and breath, no one's blood will be upon my head that day. No one will look at me and say, Joshua Selman, you had access to me, but you never spoke to me about Jesus. Do you know, listen, do you know what the, the, the scribes and the Pharisees said? They said, let his blood be on our head. Who taught them that principle? That the blood of a man can be upon the head of another. And that God would look and say, Ken, I gave you access. I gave you graces. And you ended up building an empire. MOG. They invited you to travel around the world. They gave you water, ushers around. And you never, you were not concerned about the souls of men. There are men who will carry the blood of others on their head. Hallelujah. Oh, I must preach. Necessity is laid upon me. Some of us, the only reason why we cannot, I'm not talking of condemning people, but I'm talking of being passionate enough to trust God. Tell them what Jesus did in your life. There are some of you, you have never invited anybody to church, not once, the way you are like this. You don't care. It's not an issue at all. Yet we sing and we say, Lord, I love you. Yet we sing and we say, someday I'm going home. The Lord is speaking to us tonight. The Bible says the harvest is wide, but the laborers are few. He said, pray ye the Lord of the harvest. That he will send laborers. When Jesus came, he gave his assignment a business like attitude. He said, I must walk the walk of him that sent me. Hallelujah. We just came back from a trip. And when I came, I couldn't even rest just to do everything and to come here. Now, why all of this thing? Our flight was delayed. There were so many things. These guys have been tired. We left Bene Republic this morning by 5 a.m. in the morning. Headed to the airport. Our flight was shifted. And I can justify and say, Kite, God, you too, you know. But Paul said the love. He said, I, Paul, a bond servant. It looks like I'm in slavery, but no one is forcing me. There is love that constrains me. Little inconveniences for some of us. Little inconveniences for the kingdom. And we complain. Please don't get me wrong. I'm not against comfort. But I'm telling you. If it is because you want to be comfortable. That you allow souls to die. And you don't make spiritual progress. Their blood will be on your head. Tomorrow morning we're up. Teaching school of ministry students from there. We're headed to Zamfara. Coming back Monday morning straight into the counseling session. Why am I doing all this? Am I stupid or I don't know where a retreat center is? That I can just go and lie down and say, let me rest. What drives you, my brothers and my sisters? Please don't say you are a ministry. No. What is it that when you get up in the morning, truly, please take seriously what I'm saying. What drives you? What drives you? F power or fame? What drives your Christian experience? There are some of you, those around you, it's not like they are hardened. Nobody has preached to them. They've been coming to church. You know they are not born again. You know they are not born again. Religion is not being born again. If they are not saved, they are not saved. Period. It's time to talk to them and tell them I, I want to talk to you. Is it too much to pay and invite them to a restaurant and talk to them about Jesus Christ? Can your 500 naira not go for the gospel? Will it kill you? Will it kill you? What is wrong with three or four of you coming 
and just praying for three days just praying and fasting no group no ministry no nothing just to pray for souls genuinely ask people to submit the names of their unsaved ones and pray after three days that's all jesus said if you do this to the least of my brethren see let me tell you the day jesus comes we are going to be surprised because those you think are the greatest in the kingdom you will be shocked to find out that they are not the greatest some of us the men of god that you think will be the greatest you will be surprised that some of us who have just barely made heaven whereas there are people whose entire life they don't have revelation they don't have any rema nobody's inviting them for any ministration but their heart in life and in death has been committed towards the gospel there are classmates of us that have never heard about jesus christ we are ashamed Sometimes when I pass through ABU campus, I look at the campus and I nod my head. Things have changed. Things have changed. The fire. Many of us are afraid to talk to people about Jesus. Okay, agree that you cannot go for all the crusades and the rest. What of your family members? You grew up knowing your father drinking and smoking. I'm bowing to a God. Have you ever said, Daddy, there's something I want to discuss with you. Say, my father that I know, as if you don't know the Holy Spirit too. What if I talk to him and he insults me? Is that the reason why you will not talk? What if I talk to him and he stops giving me uh, pocket money? What if I tell the brother that this relationship he is not born again and let me talk to him about Jesus Christ. Won't it cost me the relationship? I want to marry. Okay, marry. There are some of us, as you are looking at me right now, even those you are in a relationship with are unbelievers. They are going to hell. You don't care. Who is he? He's a nice guy. Is he born again? And please, everybody is a sinner. If he's a sinner, he's a sinner. Your priority is not love. Your priority is salvation. Please hear what I'm saying. Because on that day, the Lord is going to ask you. Praise the Lord. One last prayer point. Lord, whatever I can do at this level to contribute to the advancement of the kingdom and soul winning, reveal it to me. Whatever I can do. If you can't preach, you can sow seeds. Please pray. Everybody must do something. What can I do for my family? Do I need to organize a get together? Do I need to celebrate my father's birthday for him so that he will be saved? What can I do at this level? Do I need to buy a card? Do I need to write an article for my family members? Do I need to produce tract? What can I do? At this level, don't say I cannot do anything. With the grace you have, there's something you can do. Please pray. Lord, you gave me a voice. I can sing with it. You gave me wisdom. I can use that as a platform. Lord, you bless me with finances. I can release my wealth for the kingdom. Lord, you gave me a car. My car can be used for the kingdom. You gave me a baby saloon. It can be used for the kingdom. You gave me a restaurant. It can be used for the kingdom.
there's something I can do. I can pray. I can preach. I can finance the kingdom. Hallelujah. Listen to me. I can go on my knees and beg you. Don't make this just an emotional thing. It's easy to just feel emotional and just say, wow, because I spoke about hellfire and rapture and books. It's easy for you to be threatened and then just carry the euphoria for one or two days and it dies back. Take this as a message God is giving you. No matter what you have done in ministry, if souls are not being saved, you are wasting God's time. Hallelujah. Please rise up and lift. If you wrote your prayer, your request, if it's in a book, just lift it up. I want to pray on it. Listen. You are the first agent that will follow up these people. Don't just pray for an anonymous man of God to evolve from anywhere. You are the man of God that God is authorizing tonight to start. Don't fear their faces. I'm not saying you should go and do stupid things without zeal. Or with zeal and without knowledge. Just jump into people's houses and inconvenience them start with your family members your family members will not kill you at least you can start from there father we repent in any way we have trivialized the issue of soul winning and lord we know that this is in your heart and you decided to move us this direction We want your heartbeat to become our heartbeat. We want your cry to become our cry. We want your passion to become our passion. Put a piece of your desire for souls in our hearts. And let it be a fire that nothing in this life can quench. Oh, we desire you. We desire you. Put that passion lord i stretch my hands towards these names there are so many people who are going to hell whose names are written some of them are fathers some are mothers lord in the name of jesus we agree as a family of faith that beginning from tonight let there be strange angelic visitations strange angelic visitations force them to go for crusades may they go for meetings may they encounter men and women of god and lord we pray especially for those who are not of the christian faith lord you know that humanly speaking their minds are made up but in the name of jesus christ i pray angelic visitations encounters of jesus christ as they sleep they will see his face as they sleep they will see his face in the name of jesus christ as they sleep they will see the cross they will see the cross it will follow them everywhere they go we ransom their souls from the pit of hell lord we will not stand in heaven and watch our loved ones enter that wide gate of hell we will stand and we will rejoice put a passion in us to win souls let it not just be a religious evangelical thing lord remind us that if we do not win these souls and we let them die that their blood will be upon our heads i pray for everyone 
I kill timidity from your life. Whatever makes you ashamed of the gospel, I don't care what it is, whether your inability to communicate well, your poor background, complex that you have about yourself, that, that, that limitation is swallowed up tonight in the name of Jesus. May my God give you utterance. May my God give you utterance. May my God give you confidence. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray that you will not win souls and miss heaven yourself. I pray for everyone that the same way we are gathered in the earth like this that is how we will see ourselves on that day we will see ourselves and know ourselves therefore i pray any manner of life represented here listen to me any manner of life that the devil is deceiving anyone into and making it look like it does not matter Tonight, that power of sin is broken over your life. Every association, every wrong thing that can jeopardize your eternal destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ, receive grace to say no to every appearance of evil. Receive no to receive grace to say no to wicked and ungodly relationships receive grace to cut away from people who do not love god nor value his ways in the name of jesus christ and where you need to stand alone receive courage to stand alone where they mock you and say all kinds of things I release grace for you to still stand. I pray for you from the depths of my heart that every weight, every habit, every attitude you know that can destroy your Christian experience and rob you of the opportunity. I don't care what it is and how long it has been. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray that that life of pretense dies tonight. And I pray for those of you who have been doing things both great and small for the kingdom. Grace to continue. I pray specifically for all the workers in this house. I want you to know that your contributions to advancing the kingdom the worship departments the ushers one day you will see this record in heaven and the lord will say this is what you did on earth for my kingdom and for those of us who are not serious with the house of god not the things of god we are just careless there is no kind of commitment that you have you don't give for in the house of god you don't pray you don't support the cause of the kingdom I pray tonight that God will speak to you and that for the first time for some of us you will say enough of lukewarm Christianity it's time to plunge in and commit myself truly in the name of Jesus Christ for some of you who have been wounded on account of the gospel you have been misunderstood on account of the gospel I pray for you there is a balm in Gilead there are some of us who have been persecuted because of the gospel. You have been blackmailed because of your Christian integrity. I speak to you, do not give up. A day of reward is coming. There is one who is called the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. You are suffering financially today. If only you compromise on your Christian integrity, that man would have given you money. Now the money is not there, but he's telling on you. I want you to know that the Lord is proud of you. He is watching. A day of reward and recompense is coming. It's coming. It's coming. Beauty that makes this whole lot adore you. Home. Oh spent with you 
we just sing this song once here I am to here I am to bow for you tonight is to live with eternity in view whatever you need to do to remind yourself I want you to remind yourself life does not end here life does, I want this is the message to you the personal word of the Lord to you that there is more live your life knowing that you will give account of it don't live your life as if you own your, yourself. Live your life as you joke, as you play, huh? as you go around your normal activity. Remind yourself that a day is coming when all that we see today will be no more. Let it not scare you, but it serves as a buffer solution. It will check balance excesses in your life and it will keep you hot for the kingdom. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Father, thank you for tonight. You took us in a way and a dimension that we did not even expect. But Lord, we thank you because this has produced fire in us. I truly believe that from this message, habits and all kinds of things have died a natural death. You will walk back and find out that the things you could not resist, all of a sudden, there is grace for you. A revelation has imparted grace. All of a sudden, things you could not say no to, you will find out that you can look it at the face and now say no. Some of us, many of us, was one of the things that I wanted to talk about. The rate at which pornography and masturbation. Just give me a minute. Let me talk about these two things. I know that I, we're out of time. The rate at... No, no, no. Keep standing. We're rounding up already. The rate at which these things are eating up believers. We'll talk on that when we talk on the canal. Not exactly on these things. But I just feel in my personal experience as I talk with people I found out that these things are about the biggest demons they are, they are eating up pastors reverends apostles, teachers prophets well meaning Christians there are probably many of us here right now you are looking at me it's not like you are bad people it's not like you don't love God I don't know how that spirit just came upon the body of Christ. It must be attacked back to hell. Masturbation and pornography, these two things, they go hand in hand. Believe me, you come into a congregation and you'll be surprised at least 60 to 65% of that congregation. And it's not, I know I've counseled married men and women who are still involved in pornography and masturbation. You would be thinking marriage will solve the problem. But it didn't solve it. That to tell you it's a spirit. <laughs> Listen. I said it when I was teaching the school of ministry students. We are here to help you. Don't go to hell for nothing. 
Are you hearing what I'm saying? There are some of you, the devil has deceived you. If you open up with people, you, you really think your situation is the first? I've had men of God, pastors, some colleagues in ministry come to me to say, look, you've got to help me. And for you, if people come to you, it's not an, a situation to start running and say, can you imagine? Even so, so, so person came and met me. And I also want to advise you, be careful who you meet for counsel. Huh? So that you don't just take yourself innocently and say, I'm suffering from pornography or masturbation. And the man of God says, ah, this is what I've been waiting for. And then he now takes the advantage. I've spoken with a lot of ladies who have gone to meet men of God, telling them, look, I'm suffering with lust. I can't see men and resist them. And then at the end of the discussion, in the final analysis, the man is adding, adding to the iniquity again. If you're a man of God here, listen to me, and members come to you for counseling, and you end up sleeping with them or doing anything stop it you are going to hell if you the bible says he that causes every one of these to fall masturbation and pornography two devils we are going to pray just in one minute is that all right if we pray please i like you to challenge you see the truth is we are all scattered here but everyone were the ones who know I'm not condemning you it is the truth many of us have quoted everything we have fasted, we have prayed people come to me and they cry and they tell me man of God it was even in the period of fasting I was fasting three days in the period of the fasting it's because you need help hallelujah we're going to lift our voice we're going to say Lord we banish this spirit first from our lives and from koinonia and from the body of Christ. Lift your voice and pray. Take it seriously. We curse this spirit to devils that are destroying the body of Christ. Destroying pastors. Destroying men of God. Pray! We curse the spirit of pornography we challenge it we challenge it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ we declare that we are the sanctified we are holy kept set apart we are the vessels in that great house that are unto honor pray I challenge that spirit of masturbation of pornography you are a devil from the pit of hell you will not steal away the destiny of the church pray for yourself pray for this great house pray for the body of Christ we break the power in the name of Jesus we break the power we break the power of sin we break the power of iniquity we break the power hallelujah hallelujah Lord, we love you we love you we declare how much we need you we need you we need you hallelujah hallelujah very powerful song i love songs that that communicate our desperation i love acknowledging my desperation i love you jesus i worship and adore you just wanna tell you that i love you You just worship him, I'm singing unto him. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you that I love you more than anything. Oh, this is from 
the depths of my heart. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you that I love you more than anything. Just the voices, just softly from your heart. the depth of your heart you're speaking to a living person I love you Jesus I worship and adore you I just want to tell you that I love you more than anything for the last time now I like your heart to be in this song I love you Jesus I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you that I love you more than anything. Yes, Lord, we love you. Oh, this is why we're here. We love you. We love you. It's a language our spirits have come to terms with. We love you. There are many things that we feel about you. We appreciate you. We thank you. But most of all, we love you. We love you. I just want to tell you that I love you more than anything. That's the part I want you to think about more than anything. Is that true? I just want to tell you. I know you love him, but how much do you do? There's a song the worship team sang one time. I hope you still can remember. Is it more than anything? Is that true? More than anything. Just speaking it in my spirit. Go ahead and sing. Just lift your hands and love him tonight. It's a very simple song. If you cannot sing it, you can express your heart by the lifting up of your hands. More than oh, hallelujah. We love you. We love your presence. We love your word. We love everything about you. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. More than anything. To hear you say that I'm your friend. I lay everything down. You are my desire. You are my desire. No one, nothing else will do. Sing it. For nothing else can take your place in my life. For nothing else. Take your place to feel the warmth of your embrace, to feel the warmth of your embrace. And Lord, when I'm confused, help me find that way that leads to your presence, and then bring me back to you. Yeah, yeah. 
life makes it look like you are far. Just help me know that you are near. Oh, you're oh, oh, oh. I want. You're everything I ever need. Tell the Lord how much you love him. It's important that you express your love to him. Lord, I love you. You're a real person. You're not a thing. You are a real person. I love you. I thank you. I appreciate you. I will serve you, but I love you. There remain at this three. Faith, hope, and love. But the Bible says the greatest the greatest Hallelujah What's that song again? To know and follow hard after you just let me do my crazy thing on the stage. We'll soon sit down. Your disciple and something. That's the part I like now. This world is empty, pale and poor. Compared to knowing you, my Lord. Lead me on and I will run after you. Come on, sing. Lead me on and I'll run after you. Lead me on. depend on you like the fish depends on water like man depends on air we depend on you you're not one of the many important things in our lives you are everything you are all we acknowledge you we acknowledge you your word tells us that in all our ways that we acknowledge you and Lord we acknowledge you but more much more than our acknowledgement we love you we love you we have an affinity towards you that we cannot control we love you we have a desire towards your life and the things of the spirit hallelujah hallelujah Praise the Lord. See, when you think about the things that the Lord has done in your life, you will find a reason to truly love Him. Hallelujah. I think a lot about the hand of God upon my life. I'll be a fool to credit everything God has done to my prayer life. I'll be a fool to credit everything to my study or fasting and all of that. Thank God for these things. But God has given much, much more than I would ever ask. So sometimes when I begin to worship Him, you see, if you have not taken out time to count your blessings and to count the hand of God upon your life, it will be easy to complain. It will be easy to grumble. It will be easy to see what you think God has not done. It's only when you are alive you can think of money. It's only when you are alive that you can think of exams spoke with a lady this morning who came out from the ICU and um, lovely 
ambitious lady like every one of us. Praise the Lord. Had not slept for two days. And her entire passion is not to get married, not to get a job, not to get money, not to find relevance, but to walk out of blood cancer. Blood cancer is medically a death sentence. That's cancer of the blood. Yet I spoke with this lady and she was rejoicing and hopeful. Still believing that God can do many things. And then we come into a place where God has been so faithful to us. The Bible says, if the Lord had not been on our side, now may Israel say, Hallelujah. I love him from the depths of my heart. And I am deeply grateful. I'm not an ingrate. I study the dealings of God in my life. And I generously appreciate him. You never hear it from my mouth that I complain and grumble. And I say, Lord, why? Why didn't you give me tea? Why didn't you give me bread? Why didn't you give me a suit? Oh, I'm more than grateful. There are many things to be grateful about. Number one, I'm grateful because I know him. This has secured my eternal destiny. Number two, I know him because he has taught me his ways. He's taught me how to live. The word of God has given me wisdom. Hallelujah. And the Bible says, by me kings reign and princes decree justice. I love him because he has been faithful. Faithful. It's a quality that human beings hardly have. Faithfulness. The ability to stay true and to be consistent. Ever faithful. Never changing. Even when we change, his nature refuses him from changing. And he remains faithful. He calls himself the faithful and the true God. Hallelujah. God has been merciful to us. No matter how stubborn you are in this place, no matter how hardened you are, you know that he has been faithful. Hallelujah. He has been faithful. Many of us look at what he's doing. I sat back and while um, our brother and his lovely wife were giving their testimony, you don't know how this, you don't know what these things do to me. It's easy to think that Joshua Selman is behind all of these things and I thank God for being a channel. But can I tell you something? Like John said, there is one who is mightier than I. Hmm. He said, he must increase that I must decrease. In one minute, I'd like you to lift both of your hands and at least remember two or three things God has done and tell him thank you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I thank you for life. Have you considered how many of your prayer requests have been granted? Lord, it was like a dream, but the pain is gone. It's like a dream, finally. I'm a graduate. The job has finally come. After many years, a man has finally come to propose to me. I give you praise. Lord, I give you praise. I never believed the genotype would change, but it's history. That which was a mountain yesterday has become my testimony. That which was a reason for my tears has become a reason for my joy and I give you praise oh how can I forget your faithfulness
Just bless him. Just love him and tell him how grateful you are. The situation would have killed you, but you're still alive. Still alive. When men concluded about you, when you even concluded about yourself, Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for being a faithful God. Hallelujah. I sing praises to your name. Lift your hands. Oh, God. Praises to your name. Everything to me, you are everything to me, and I exalt your holy name. I exalt your
if you never do anything else, we are still grateful. We are still grateful. Hallelujah. I'd like us to thank God for just one thing before we sit down. I'd like you to pray and say, I see my life changing and Lord, I give you praise. Truly. If you're not changing, it's alright. You can just worship Him. But I see my life changing. My goodness. My goodness. My goodness. My goodness. I see my life increasing in wisdom. Increasing in grace. Yes, Lord, you have been faithful. Yes, Lord, you have been faithful. I give you praise. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you and we love you. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. You're welcome. Please be seated. I welcome everyone once again, inside and outside. May God bless you. Again, let me remind us that we are sowing to the Spirit. A day of reward is coming. Hallelujah. It says, do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, he will reap. The Bible encourages us and it says, let us not be weary in well-doing. Because weariness is part of the limitations of this body. We can be weary. But he said, let us not be weary in well-doing. He said, for we will reap in due season if we faint not. I told us last week, the word of the Lord that came to us, that we must be consistent. We must be consistent. The key to spiritual growth, the key to dexterity in the spirit, the key to commanding power with God is not just knowing what you should do, but staying there. Do it for as long as it would take until there is a manifestation. Hallelujah. Paul speaking to his son in the gospel, Timothy, he said, meditate on these things. Give yourself wholly, wholly, not half-heartedly, give yourself wholly to them. He said that thy profiting will appear unto all. I give you a guarantee. God is going somewhere with your life. You may not see where he's going, but I know that he's taking you somewhere. He'll lead you and guide you to the city of Papa. He'll lead you and guide you to your place of destiny. He'll lead you and guide you to the city of Papa. He'll lead you and guide you to your place of destiny. There is a place for every one of us in this life. There is a place for us in destiny. Hallelujah. And Job said there is a path that no fowl knoweth. Although it flies, but it has not been able to see that path. He said the whelps of the lion has not gotten there. These are paths that only the Lord by wisdom has crafted out for himself. And if we stay with God, he will lead us through that path. I choose to sow in the spirit. I choose to sow to the spirit. I choose to walk with the spirit. The Bible says, surely there is an end. Everyone says, surely there is an end. So says the Bible, surely there is an end. And it says, thine expectation 
shall not be cut short. There is an end. There is an end. Learning continues forever, but a time will come, learning will coincide with results, manifestation. And for some of us, we are this close to new seasons of breakthrough, of grace. Continue the giving, continue the fasting, continue the prayer, continue building capacity. God is building you this much because that which is coming upon you is mighty. So you must sustain the strength to carry it. Hallelujah. The Bible calls it the desire of nations. The desire. What nations long for. What people kill for. What people go to the devil for. The desire of nations. When God puts it upon your life, you become the desire of nations. May that be so in the name of Jesus Christ. Gaining spiritual stature, part three. We'll finish it up today. There's just very little to finish. And then we'll pray. I, I just sense that we are flying in the spirit. I just sense that there is a spiritual... How do I describe what I'm feeling now, oh God? I just sense that there is, there, is, there is an altitude in the spirit. Listen, I've been sensing this for a long time. That there is a height, there is a dimension in the spirit that God is taking us. It's so slow we are not noticing the shifts and the changes. Yet firm is lifting us. We are gaining wings. Wings that fly. A realm where certain challenges do not exist again. A realm of true liberty. The Bible says, now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Hallelujah. We are soaring like the eagles. You may not see it. You may think you are still walking. Until he's done with you and he shows you the report card. You'll find out that you stopped walking a long time ago. You took on a flight in the spirit. Hallelujah. We said how that there are three kinds of men according to scripture. In the first part of this series. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians 2 verse 14. That there is one who is called the natural man. Hallelujah. And we agree that the natural man is one who is unregenerate. Who is yet to encounter the Lord. The one you call a sinner, an unbeliever. Hallelujah. And the Bible tells us that he does not sustain the spiritual capacity to relate with spiritual things. He calls them foolishness. Because the quickening that must happen to his spirit man to begin to understand spiritual things has not yet happened. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bible says the gospel is the power of God that brings men unto salvation. And so he probably has not heard or acknowledged the lordship of Jesus Christ over his life. And as a result, he thinks purely sensually. His, his plane of interaction ends with his five senses. Hallelujah. He's a victim of all that he has known and he does not acknowledge God. And we agreed and we saw that sadly the eternal destiny of such a man is the lake of fire. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And the Holy Spirit took us to another level as we began to pray and encourage ourselves and intercede for lost ones. And I hope that we are still um, passionate about souls. Daniel 12 tells us that they that be wise shall be like the firmaments of the heavens and they that turn many to righteousness like the brightness of the stars even forevermore. There is a reward for committing yourself to turn many to righteousness. Hallelujah. And last week we considered the second kind of man and we said is the carnal man. The carnal man. The word carnal there means sensual, worldly, sensual. Hallelujah. 
And we agree that the carnal man is saved. He has come to a point where he has met the Lord Jesus Christ. However, he is still a slave to the flesh and he is still a slave to its desires. He is still subject to the ways and the demands of the old man. So although he has given his life to Christ, his organ of understanding spiritual things has begun to be quickened, but he has not cooperated with the spirit. Hallelujah. He has not, he has refused to pay that price of alignment in the spirit. The price there is the price of spiritual alignment. To align himself so that he will come out of the grip of carnality. Hallelujah. And we said a few things that is, this is a very pathetic situation. We agreed that um, the issue with this nature is that it can rob the believer from experiencing the victory of the cross. Carnality is one of the reasons why many Christians see something in the Bible but it never becomes a reality over time in their life. And so they keep claiming it but there is not a manifestation because there are spiritual requirements to walk into the reality of this. One of the disasters of carnality is that it stops you, it robs you of experiencing the power of the cross, the saving power, the true freedom that the cross and the blood of Christ offers. Number two, we said that um, the believer in this condition will hardly experience sustained spiritual growth. Hallelujah. And this affects all kinds of people, preachers, ordinary people. You find out that today they are prayerful, tomorrow they are down. Today they are walking in holiness and righteousness, tomorrow they are down. Hallelujah. No sustained spiritual growth. It's a life of struggle. And so it's like you break through a path in the spirit. And after a while, you are down uh, to the dust again. Number three, we said that living a carnal life permits the operation demonic. It gives access to demonic influences over the believer's life. While it is true that one who is saved cannot be possessed because the Holy Spirit lives in him. There is a union between his spirit and that of the spirit of God. There is there is there is a oneness hallelujah however his life his faculty can be manipulated according to the counsel of darkness and so although that man is born again he may find himself being a victim of all kinds of things it is at that realm where curses and yokes and spells and enchantments still exist praise the lord so although the person is born again and according to God's word, the Bible says you are a new creation in Christ. But he does not walk into the reality of that experience because flesh is the life of the dust. And Satan was told in Genesis that you will feed upon the dust. And so when that becomes your nature, you become accessible to demonic activities. Are we following? Verse 4, or sorry, point number 4. I said that in its worst state, the believer can fall out of grace and lose his salvation through idolatry and rebellion. I did disprove last time that the concept of once saved, forever saved is a fallacy. I'm sorry to say it. I wish it were not true, but it is the truth. The concept that once you are saved, you can do anything and nothing else changes it is not accurate hallelujah i love those who brought this perspective to the body of christ i honor them we honor their spiritual investments and that which they have brought to the body of christ but as we grow spiritually there is need to adjust i was speaking in a pastor's conference yesterday and i was telling them that one of the things we must sustain as men of god is the humility to adjust when greater light is open unto us it is very embarrassing there are many things I used to believe. I no longer believe them now. And there are many things I didn't used to believe. I probably would argue with them. But now they have become, they have been incorporated into my belief system. So realize that the life of a believer is a life of consistent repentance and alignment. This is the, this is the symbol. It is the signature that characterizes spiritual growth. That occasionally you will be required to repent and align the word repent is not an ungodly word it's not a word for sinners to repent means to turn from a perspective and begin to see from another view so we will need to repent and align ourselves 
please let it not embarrass you if in the course of your Christian experience you find the need to adjust we all have at one point or the other believed certain things about God about men about ministry and as the word of God opens up realize and place your pos yourself in a position where you'd say I am a student in the school of the spirit Isaiah when he saw the Lord he broke down there was nothing embarrassing about it there is still much more for us to see in the spirit and so if we camp around this that has become our experience then we may never grow we must sustain the humility to keep aligning that spiritual alignment is what opens up us to become um, uh, portals for, for kingdom activities just like Mike shared, he said, let it be done in the earth, in this body. That this body will become a gate where spiritual things can find expression. Hallelujah. And then the last point we looked at, the issue with the carnal nature is that it stops the believer from being a true lampstand and a written epistle in his territory of influence. The Bible tells us again and again that the church and the believer as an individual entity that we are the light of the world. We are the salt of the earth. That means that our lives are supposed to be spiritual templates, mirrors, vistas for men to be able to see what God's life, that the reality of the divine life should be communicated accurately through our lives. But if we dwell in that realm of carnality, it can tamper with the quality of the, the, the reflection of Christ through us. And so you find out that men will look at us but they will see darkly. We will not give an accurate representation. The word represent means to present him again. Represent. That we create an accurate portrait of what the divine life is. Hallelujah. I define the word carnal. And I told us that to be carnal means to be sensual, to be ruled by factors and agencies other than the spirit. It doesn't just mean five senses alone. Every time you are ruled and controlled by an agency that is outside of the Holy Ghost, you are carnal. Hallelujah. Whatever is the name of that agency, if it is outside of the Holy Ghost, it is called carnality. So to be carnal it's not just to be materialistic necessarily or to be ruled by your five human senses. No. That every time you subject yourself to an agency to influence and manipulate your life that is other than the spirit of God. According to scripture, you are called carnal. Are we blessed? And I helped us to define the word flesh in this context. And uh, I told us that flesh... It's not body. They are interchanged in scripture. Like in Galatians 2.20, it talks about the flesh, but it means our mortal body. But flesh in this context has used when the Bible is talking about the man of the spirit and the man of the flesh. Flesh, I define it as the way of life. I love the definition. A way of life that is helplessly subject to the appetites, the lusts, and the desires of the old man helplessly subject this describes the experience of many believers in the body of Christ we are we are helplessly subject seemingly that's the reason why many believers cannot tame certain appetites of the flesh hallelujah according to first John chapter 2 from verse 15 to 17 the Bible tells us love not the world we did examine that um, there are three dimensions of, of carnality and three levels of being ruled by the flesh. We said the first is the lust of the eyes. We talked about the word lust. Lust means an affinity for something. When the Bible says love not the world, it uses the Greek word eros and is the word lust to develop an ungodly affinity for a thing. Hallelujah. I told us that there are many words that are used. I'm just doing a quick recap for love. Hallelujah. Number one is, is filio. Filio is earthly love, 
the love between friends, husband and wife, the highest dimension of human love. Hallelujah. And then the Bible talks to us also that there is um, agape or agape. That's the love of God. Love that is not of this realm. Hallelujah. And then the third level is eros. Eros is, is immoral love. Love that is sponsored by lust. A demonic, ungodly, carnal affinity towards certain things. And the Bible says, love not the world. Remember the teaching? I'm emphasizing it because we can never have enough of it. Love not the world. The world is eros. Do not develop an ungodly affinity for this system. That means that there are many things in this world that can cause the believer to begin to develop an ungodly affinity. And the Bible categorizes them into three. The first is the lust of the what? The eyes. The lust of the eyes. An affinity that is sponsored by your vision. The things you can see creating an ungodly affinity. When you see a beautiful car, when you see a beautiful lady or a handsome guy, when you see a nice cloth, when you see all of these things, because of your eyes, if the Holy Spirit does not come to play a part to bring you out of that realm of carnality, you will find out that you become subject to an affinity that is beyond your power for such kinds of things. Are you following me now? Then the second is the lust of the flesh. An affinity that comes because of what your body wants. Food, immorality, and all kinds of things that are associated with the flesh. And I told us last week that it is good to pay attention to our bodies but not at the expense of our spiritual growth. Gluttony is one proof of carnality. An excessive um, uncontrollable affinity for food and this is um, among many other things uh, spiritual activities like fasting bring us to a place where food stays in its um, designated place in our lives and it doesn't go beyond the boundary hallelujah and then the cravings to satisfy our bodies through whatever means that's what has led people into acts like masturbation, acts like um, uh, pornography, and so on and so forth. The, the, that affinity to satisfy our body. Hallelujah. And then the Bible says the pride of life. That human desire to be in control outside of God. That human desire to receive earthly acknowledgement on grounds of our accolades and our fulfillment and achievements in life. It is a natural thing. Our natural disposition places us to be victims of this kind of nature. So we must be able to rise to a plane that is not natural. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I told us that the ultimate sign of carnality is uncontrolled lust. The ultimate sign. You can look at your life now and know to what degree you have attained spiritual stature. There is no confusion about it. God gave us exact templates. So you can know right now, every one of you listening to me inside and outside, you can know right now whether you are carnal or spiritual and if spiritual to what degree you have been able to gain stature in the spirit the test is very simple uncontrolled lust every time your appetites rule over you you are carnal every time your desire rules over you you see let me tell you something everything god gave man he gave man control over it praise the lord when the things that god gave you control over begins to control you it is sponsored by another strength that is not natural the carnal realm is the realm of the flesh that's where strongholds that's where mindsets mentalities and I tell you, it's a, it's a great gate for demonic activities in the life of the believer. 
why are we taking this series because you see if we want god to do business with us we must rise to a point where we lose affinity for the things of the flesh hallelujah and that's going to be my my the path i'll take tonight um i told us that to become a spiritual man there are two things number one is death to the flesh romans 13 verse 14 and i define that to die to the flesh means to rise to a spiritual state where your spirit your soul and your body can effortlessly withstand the pressures the lusts and the cravings of the flesh you are truly dead to the flesh when you rise to that plane in the spirit where both your spirit soul and body can effortlessly effortlessly take note of the word i told us yesterday um last week that um using willpower to fight the flesh is man's way of seeking divine help it doesn't work that way are you getting me i did give us an example last week that i may not be sleeping around but that is not necessarily a proof that i am free from the spirit of lust are you getting me i can be suffering the urge for lust through freedom is when both the challenge and the urge for it leaves you when it becomes effortless you are truly free are we following now there are many people in the body of christ who have not done certain things but they are struggling that struggle was communicated by the apostle himself in chapter 7 of romans he began to communicate his personal frustration and i told us that that is even more deadly than committing all of the acts of sin or gluttony and all of that praise the lord so if there is food for me to eat and i'm suffering from gluttony lost for food and i refuse to eat because i don't want a bad name that torture is worse than even um eating in itself you see that so god god did not design us into a life of of end that uh I, I i wanted to use the word endurance but then in the context of um struggle that we're struggling and trying to use willpower no that's the way of the flesh there is liberty true liberty that comes when the spirit of the christ finds expression in us hallelujah where you effortlessly rise beyond the pressures of the body where you can prepare a nice meal and you are about to eat it and the holy ghost says take a fast and at once it becomes effortless the ability to give up that desire for something superior is called spirituality hallelujah it's a position in the spirit and in your christian experience where you're craving for food your craving for bodily satisfaction, pleasure, and fame loses its power and dominion over you. At that point, you are dead to the flesh. Number two, becoming a spiritual man entails walking in the spirit. Galatians chapter um, 5 verse 16, the Bible says, This I say then, walk in the spirit, and you shall not gratify the desires of the flesh hallelujah what does it mean to walk in the spirit it means to depend on the grace and power that is supplied by the person of the holy spirit within us to walk in the spirit is to depend on the grace and the power that he supplies listen to me brothers and sisters there is a grace and spiritual power that the holy spirit supplies to us and it can keep you it can take you to a point where you become flawless in your Christian experience. There is such an ability of the Spirit. And I showed us in Jude 24, how that the Bible says, Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling. So there is an ability that is supplied by the agency of the Spirit that can keep you from falling. Refuse that theology that, um, okay, we can fall down, and then we rise up just expect that one day. no 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 the path of the just is as a shining light 
It's not just a shining light automatically. It's a shining light because at every point, at every point in your life, there is a supply of the grace and the ability of the Spirit. So where, as an ordinary man, naturally, I'm a young man. Are you getting my point? Naturally, I'm a young man. I'm not married. The natural disposition in society is that I should have the normal, unusual affinity, maybe for ladies or something, and then go and sleep around and do this, and people say, it happens. That is the natural state. If I depend on my strength, I will helplessly be a victim of that kind of life. It doesn't matter whether I'm a preacher or not. So realizing that I do not have the capacity to help myself, I tap into a higher supply of the spirit. This is the true revelation of the grace of God. The supply of the power of the spirit. An agency beyond your human strength. So that what you should have been ordinarily subject to, there is grace. This is what the divine life is all about. We have no right to talk about the divine life when we are still under the elements of this life. When you experientially rise beyond certain limits, you prove to men here and now that the divine life is at work in you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Um, we came back from, from Niger State this morning and um, the protocol, they were telling me a few things. They said I, I was sleeping in the car. They said one day they are going to bundle me and go and book a hotel and just throw me there and lock the place to force me to rest because it looks like I don't rest. Let me tell you, I know it's good to rest, but for me, this scripture has become a reality if that same spirit that raised Christ. See, when the word of God becomes true, it should become flesh and manifest bodily. Bodily. If we all agree that there is a realm where sickness cannot touch you, then that means that there is a plane in the spirit. You see, the trouble is, we teach believers that it is possible, but we do not tell them at which spiritual position that becomes a possibility. It's not a possibility everywhere. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's not a possibility everywhere. How many of us know that in Nigeria, there is a level that you get to where you are not just given green passport there are other kinds of passports right there are diplomatic passports that grant you access without struggling here and there now until you get to certain realms if i just teach you that there is such a realm in nigeria and you carry your green passport and start running as though it's a diplomatic passport you'll be embarrassed for nothing and you would think i told a lie so it's not enough to tell believers the possibilities that are in the Bible. Every possibility is activated at a certain spiritual frequency. It's like your radio waves. Are you following me now? As we are seated right now, there are different waves. They are operating at different frequency. If you can tune in to certain frequencies, some things become possible at once. But if you do not have the capacity to tune to that spiritual frequency, it will look as if it is a lie. There is a realm, brothers and sisters, where a man can walk in purity, in reality, without struggle. There is a realm where sickness can no longer find expression in your body. It is not in every realm. So the question is not to tell people the divine life is at work. Hallelujah. You will be sick for nothing. It is to keep eating of that tree of life. Those spiritual capsules that bring rejuvenation to your spirit man. And as that is happening to you, you are climbing a ladder in the spirit. You will get to a point where you will walk experientially in these possibilities. Mm. My goodness. Jesus proved to us that certain things are possible to men. He rose to a dimension where he could walk through walls. That's the dimension we call immortality. Unfortunately, there are many people that teach immortality, but their concept of immortality is inaccurate. Immortality is the resultant effect of consistently eating of the tree of life. When you keep eating of the tree of life, death begins to be swallowed up by a, an activity and an agency of the spirit. And if you do that for long enough, a time will come that, that proverb will be true in your life. Oh, death, where is your sting? There is such a realm. 
but the problem is that our level of spiritual metamorphosis is so slow that our lifetime is too short to bring us into that dimension hallelujah and so if we sustain the capacity in the spirit to accelerate our growth it is true that there is such a realm death is not life i mean eternal life is not life after death the true concept of eternal life is victory over death hallelujah i hope you know that god's original exit from this earth to heaven was not death is that true <laughs> no 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 death was not god's official pattern or pathway to exit man two men in scripture showed us god's original doorway for men to leave this realm two strange men one was called enoch the seventh man after creation he showed us what perfection in the spirit can be the second man was elijah the tishbite when the chariots of heaven came a literal whirlwind that interfaced the spiritual plane and this three-dimensional plane and took a man physically bodily elijah right now is with his body enoch it with his body see that these are possibilities that exist in the spirit but brothers and sisters let me tell you if all we do is to get born again and stop there yet we want the demands that do not exist in our current spiritual plane of existence see there are things we want but those things are only possible when we press through certain realms in the spirit you see why it is important to press so certain men of god can tell you for 10 years or 20 years have not had cause to be sick in an area and you look and say it's a lie no it depends they, are, they may be lying truly many of them are lying but there are few that truly experientially in this body see i like you to look at your mortal body this body can change listen to me the spirit and the life that comes through the world creates an effect in this physical body there is corruption in this body the word corrupt means that you are subject to death but there is a level there is a level you can rise in the spirit i am convinced that shortly before jesus comes there are few men that will touch that reality in the spirit it was not just meant for enoch and elijah enoch and elijah are two witnesses they are the two witnesses that will return in the book of revelation because it is appointed unto man the bible says to die once now but not in that context of being battered by accidents and so on and so forth but because they were in the law the dispensation of the law yet they did not taste death there was no salvation for them i hope you know oh yes they couldn't have been are you getting my point they never accepted the lordship of jesus christ and the divine life that comes with that decision yet they crossed through a path in the spirit that escaped the grip of death and the bible says they will return because scriptures cannot be broken so they are the two witnesses that will re-emerge in revelations but the bible says i show you a mystery not all will sleep mm i show you it's a mystery it's something you cannot understand until the holy spirit supplies accurate understanding i show you a mystery not everyone is on serious there are people who are pressing and see let me tell you i am convinced that when christ comes some people would have touched that realm because the bible tells us that the dead in christ will rise first and there are some people who will still be alive men who defy death the hebrews 11 people mm, those who through faith have mastered the art of subduing kingdoms the bible says they shot the mouth of lions that is the true concept of what we call zoe we teach a lot about zoe everybody can squeeze in greek and hebrew words the true concept of zoe is the life of the spirit so planted in your spirit moving through the realm of your faculties and gaining ascendance in your body that you dwell bodily in that glorified form the change that will happen 
at rapture can start now that's what i'm telling you the change that happens at rapture is simply because the life that we have this limitation cannot cross beyond this three-dimensional realm so at, at that blast of the trumpet it's not just a blast for nothing as that trumpet comes it comes with a sound the same sound that was adumbrated in ezekiel 37 and then this our frail body will now hear that word are you getting my point now and so if there are people that are on earth for instance at that time who lost their legs that sound that was prophetically spoken in ezekiel 37 bones will be joined to bones there will be no corruption again and will be translated the believer among other things aside from being an ambassador is supposed to create a picture of the reality of the divine life at work in a man paul calls it the mystery of godliness he said great is the mystery of godliness what is the mystery of godliness that god can dwell in man and manifest himself bodily my goodness my goodness my goodness the divine life at work in you so way the life of god so you can you can hold someone this is normal hand but there is a translation in the spirit on the strength of a realm you occupy in the spirit something happens in your physical body hallelujah hallelujah ah my 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 desire is to change my desire is that this metamorphosis keeps happening until we demonstrate to principalities and see that is the realm where men shoot you and the gun cannot come we claim it it's not claiming it's a reward for pressing on with the spirit at that realm you understand the mystery of creation you have captured the mystery of life death has no power over you if you are still afraid of death you have not entered that realm because when you enter that realm you will see death you will see it that this is a spirit that can be tamed but how many of us are willing to contest this is why if the devil finds out that eternally you will make it he will do all within his power to keep you in the realm where everything that happens to natural men can happen to you that is his own effort to keep you from rising to that spiritual position in the carnal realm there is sickness in the carnal realm there is there are all kinds of things most of what we teach and we call new creation realities are realities that will be experienced only in this realm i'm talking about that's really what we have been taught as new creation reality because the confusion in the body and i want to correct it now is that most people have known all what they said should happen when you come in christ the experience of the Christ life and the prophetic the, the, the prophetic um, proclamation about you walking in the Christ life that's what Kenyon calls the vital side of redemption and the legal side of redemption we talk a lot about the I've studied the teachings of Kenyon very carefully I've read almost all his books John Lake touched a bit of this realm let me tell you something you will know when traces of immortality begins to be furnished in your spirit man you will know all of a sudden you will find out that certain things are no longer prevalent brothers and sisters it is at that realm if you do get to that realm no one will need to pray for you for any cause or any family ancestral anything the light that emits from that realm can break through every tribal barrier it is at this state yet many people come and say once you are in christ there's no cause there is there is a plane to which the grip of those ancestral claws can still hold you but when you rise when you truly rise you get to a point where you find out that nothing holds you again look at this look at this my goodness the bible tells us that 
Peter, Peter was in prison. Have you read that scripture? They were when they beheaded James, and I've shared with us why they beheaded James because Peter, James, and John were the pillars of the church, they were the prophetic people that were symbolized as faith, hope, and love. You see that? Uh huh. That the Bible says these three will remain, but the greatest is love. James was beheaded. When James was beheaded, it pleased Herod, it pleased the people and the spirit of the Antichrist. Because I hope you know these were the three that followed Jesus to the Mount of Transfiguration. They saw something about a true spiritual man. It was an information that the remaining disciples did not have. And Satan beheaded James. When he beheaded James, they caught Peter. You see why they were going to kill Peter? And then the church started praying. Another revelation of the power of prayer. When the church started praying, watch what happens. An angel stepped into the prison and brought an atmosphere. And watch this. When he told Peter, stand up. When he told Peter, stand up. The same power that, that killed others and made them helpless still made a man alive. And the Bible says the chains on their own volition. This is the dimension I'm talking about. Where chains by themselves fall. It's not available in every realm. Please hear me. It's not available in every realm. If it's available in every realm, what then is the reward of obedience and pressing into the spirit? This is the realm that the apostle began to speak and said there remained a Sabbath, a rest for the people of God. Although they are the people of God, that was God's original desire for the nation of Israel in Egypt. But the Bible says they could not enter that rest. So that rest, that means that office in the spirit is still available if you can occupy it. He said there remained a rest for the people of God. And we labor to enter that rest in the spirit. We labor in the spirit to get to that point where we can speak over territories. Where the, the frequency of our voice has risen beyond the second heavens where you can speak and it can rattle the foundations of the spirit and we will get there the price is what we are doing the price is to keep at it sowing to the spirit building capacity in the spirit Brothers and sisters, this is why we are doing what we are doing. And if you do not have the revelation, spirituality will bore you. Because it will look like, what, where are we going with all this? What is the reward for pressing? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus Christ. How does the Holy Ghost make men spiritual? Let's, 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 let's discuss this very briefly. The Holy Spirit is the one who is vested with the responsibility of making men truly become spiritual. But how does he do it? What is the dynamics of that spiritual operation? How does it happen? We know that it happens, but how does it happen? How does that transformation, that shift in the spirit happen? The first way he operates is by breaking what the Bible calls the power of sin in your life. Breaking the power of sin over your life. Let me tell you something small about sin. Sin is not necessarily fornication and um, stealing and lying that's really not sin in its entire scope are you getting my point sin is an influence that comes as a result of a nature sin the true picture of sin is first a nature it's an influence that can come upon man by reason of the presence of a nature at work in him And then it begins to produce certain outworkings like lust, fornication, and so on and so forth. So, to try to solve the problem of sin by um, trying to stop stealing 
or trying to stop sleeping around is not an ultimate solution. This is the picture of what the Bible calls the law. That's the part of the law. Trying to use ordinances and not tapping to the power and the supply of the spirit for help. Because according to the life of a spiritual man, your journey begins and continues and ends consistently with the supply of grace from the spirit. At no point in your spiritual experience are you allowed to do anything without of the help of the Holy Spirit. And that's the true concept of grace. Grace is only grace in your life because of what Christ has done. And the reward of what Christ has done is the presence of the Holy Spirit to help you. And there are two dimensions of grace. The first is the only one the body of Christ knows. Favor. Unmerited favor. But there is grace as the supply of power to do. Power to do. Not just to receive. Power to do. Power to pass through a path that you cannot pass through. Paul began to lament and God said, My grace is sufficient. Grace is also the name of a spiritual ability that helps men to do things supernaturally. It doesn't mean that the fact that it's grace, it means you don't do anything. No, there are things you do. But the energy that is supplied is not yours. The power of sin. The power of sin is what many believers must allow the Holy Spirit break in their life. Everyone say the power of sin. The power of sin is what Romans chapter 8 verse 1 calls the law of sin and death. The word law there is not law like Old Testament. The word law there is the word operation. The operation of sin and death let's go to Romans 8 verse 1 it says there is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ see this concept of in Christ I don't even want to go into that it's another controversy let's leave it for another day because our theology of what we call in Christ is not accurate believe me See, if you love God and you truly want to grow, if you listen to what I'm saying, it makes a lot of spiritual sense. It will now begin to give you and say, ah, I now see the reason why this and that and that and that is. Romans chapter 8 from verse 1. It says, there is therefore now no condemnation. To who? To who? Hold on. Who are the men in Christ? That's my first question. Because the Bible says, if you are in Christ, this law cannot operate in your life again. What does it mean to be in Christ? That's a discussion for another day. But I can tell you the truth. We claim we are in Christ, yet this law is still at work in us. That means God was saying something we do not understand. I'm in trouble again. To them which are in Christ. Who are those in Christ? Those born again? Those believers? Pastors? Church goers? That's the theology that we, make, we, we must examine. And that was part of the reasons why people like Watchman Nee and the rest were greatly hated in their days. Because they came with ideologies and concepts that rattled what the church had agreed upon. What does it mean to be in Christ? If any man is in Christ, he has become a new creation. In that plane, wherever that in Christ is, and whatever it means, all things have experientially passed. Hmm. The Bible says in Christ there is neither male nor female born nor free there are many things that the bible tells us in christ in christ in christ why did it not say well when paul started his preaching notice paul will say jesus christ jesus christ 
towards the end of Paul's ministry, he changed and started saying, Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus. Ah. There was a revelation Paul saw. Why did he switch it? What was the revelation? Who is Christ? Is it Jesus? Is it the Holy Spirit or both of them? I'm wetting your spiritual appetite. I'm dusting the questions you used to ask that made you grow, that you stopped asking and stopped growing. Many of us, these are the questions we insisted. When you met a preacher and he said, eh, just this is it, you said, Kai, no, I don't exactly agree. And that question, the secret is to keep asking, not to criticize, but to contemplate in the secret place. What meaning these things? The Bible says the prophets kept contemplating, looking forward. They asked questions, they inquired. When you inquire of the Lord, you will find light. You will not just absorb anything. That a teaching has been prevalent does not mean that it sustains the spiritual accuracy. I truly believe with all my heart that if men like Papa Hagen were still alive, they would have brought certain strange dimensions of the spirit to the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Kenneth Hagin and all the great men of God, we cherish them. But do not forget that knowledge stop in it didn't stop increasing at their death are you getting what i'm saying i read one of papa Hagin's books how that he said that um you know handkerchiefs and aprons and he gave a picture from that book like the anointing the only medium that the power of god can flow through is an handkerchief and apron because that's the only one in the bible but today we know better now don't criticize the man he's a man Kenneth Hagin did something to the body of Christ few men have been able to do. Yet, the least among us is still crippled. Paul, in his epistle, will write and say, even this I speak as a man. I have searched as to what the mind of the spirit is about this issue. And it's another spiritual calculus for another day. So I just speak as a man. If Paul were to return back to the earth, he will beg for all the scrolls he wrote and he, he will do major editings of many of the things we have swallowed religiously. <laughs> See some of you looking at me. Edit hey, the Bible, of course. See, there is a difference between the Bible and the Word of God. I hope you know that. Because when the apostles were alive, the word of God is what the Bible says, in the beginning there was the word. Was there Bible in the beginning? Answer me. But the Bible says in John 1, that the word of God began the beginning. Proof number one. Proof number two. In those days, men were not given access to what you call Bible. The writings of Isaiah, the prophets and the Pentateuch was kept in the temple. Like we do in Anglican church, first reading, second reading. When you come, they roll it and you read it and leave it there. They roll it back. Have you seen those, those scrolls? So they open it and they roll it and then they bow down and go and drop it back. Yet, Paul said the word of God is quick and powerful. What was his word of God? Are you seeing that the body of Christ truly needs a spiritual surgery? There is a need for an authentic apostolic and prophetic spirit to sit down. It's going to come with heavy persecution. Let me tell you. So if you want to be available to be used in editing these things, get set for heavy persecution. Because for some people, you are resetting their spiritual life to zero. You really believe that a man will sit down and watch you reset his spiritual life. It's going to be with him. You see, that's what Jesus did. When Jesus came and he started teaching, the scribes hated him. Because they had to lay down their scribehood and become followers of Jesus. And Nicodemus, while they were arguing in the open, Jesus will hate you. Nicodemus just turned and said, but ah, what is all this? And in the night, Nicodemus sneaked and came and said, Master, we know. In other words, in the council, the truth about the matter is we know. We know you are a man sent from God for no man can do these things except. It's amazing. 
when you start walking in this light you will be criticized in the open and admired in the secret oh they will criticize you badly in the open but in the secret men will say what mean at these things what mystery sponsors this level of results and audacity that's why you must build capacity in the spirit to be trusted with the mysteries of the kingdom in the days to come many people who call themselves apostles read the bible it was one of the letter to the churches we have tested them that claim they are apostles and found them to be liars a true apostolic spirit is not in title hallelujah a true apostolic spirit is in the ability to carry the mysteries of christ to a generation the mysteries he said let a man account of us as apostles stewards of the mysteries of god hmm. the power of sin must be broken over your life for the power of sin to be broken over your life the only condition is your total surrender there is nothing else you can add to it the only condition for the power of sin to be truly broken in your life is surrender not just repentance you know what it means to surrender there are three steps to surrender number one you come to terms with the fact that you cannot help yourself two you come to terms with the fact that it will take another agency higher than you to help yourself three you yield to the ability of that greater supply to help you when that happens you have surrendered we sing a lot of things about surrender surrender is not the willingness to allow someone change you surrender is the ex allowing it happen is surrender so i come to a point in my life where i see that lord if it's just left for me oh this issue of immorality will continue till thy kingdom come if it's just left for me i like money if it's just left for me i like power if it's just left for me i like political positions however i acknowledge that i do not sustain the ability to deliver myself from this body of death paul calls it romans 7 please give us the last two verses romans 7 paul is teaching us how to truly surrender we thought that he was speaking negative it's not negative confession is the pathway to true surrender Romans 7 all of me I give you all of me I give you all of me I give you you're still looking for it just go to 7 and scroll down last last two verses or three look at what paul is saying about himself let's look at 20 23 look at 23 but i see another law paulo walking in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into what this is an apostle in his full apostolic regalia yet he was crying that there was something that was going on in him how many preachers can cry this today because we are embarrassed at it and we claim like there is no need for any transformation it's not true the best of any man of god in this world right now still needs to keep rising and we must come to a point where we are that humble that when we teach members we are not teaching as those who have arrived it's only a steward we are ushers in the spirit inviting men to join in a pursuit that we should be doing too and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin he said that law is at work in his members like a cancer next verse paul needs help from god and he says oh wretched man that i am in the body of christ today we call it negative confession look at me i can't be wretched no this is not what i'm saying there is a state in the spirit isaiah did the same thing he said woe is me do you think these guys were idiots these were men who were open to spiritual things see this teaching is not to help you criticize people 
but his help is to help you discern the plane from which people are speaking when a man talks you look at the plane and then you know whether to argue or just keep quiet it's like when you are in primary school they teach you that one minus two when they say one minus two your answer is it cannot they mark you but when you get to secondary school they teach you something called number line they dare ask you one minus two you write it cannot you are repeating that class you see that so it is a reality that exists somewhere and when you say it cannot in the spirit don't criticize the person look at the plane in the days to come we will really know those who are in primary school in the spirit secondary school in the spirit fc in the spirit professors in the spirit look at me there are very few pastors that will qualify to be in the higher institutions of the spirit i am convinced that most of the people in the university of the spirit are quiet members that nobody knows these are men that have mastered the art of doing business with the spirit so while we are all making noise and gyrating with suit these men have taught spiritual things who shall deliver me that's what you must ask the first thing is an acknowledgement it's not necessarily to call yourself Rachel but to come to a point where you know that Joshua Selman you cannot help yourself you can stretch your ability to help yourself to its limit see listen to me what I am teaching you right now is what the Bible calls the gospel of grace this is the true picture of grace are you getting my point grace that is initiated by the power of the cross where a man comes to his life and sees your you see your limitation listen when you allow god to help you it does not mean you don't have any responsibility it is that at that point the best of your ability cannot help you so you are that you are relinquishing your ability does not mean you are relinquishing your responsibility are we getting the balance now the true picture of the grace of god lord i have come to a point where i cannot walk in this my human wisdom lord i have come to a point where this issue of 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 um whatever challenge or whatever thing i have come to a point where i need a supply of grace and strength that is beyond that of my human that was what was communicated in that word oh wretched man paul is saying what is this frustration so your prayer can be religious if it's not prayer that is out of a heart of surrender you can pray because it's a spiritual formula you think can help you on its own are you getting my point the state of surrender is the posture that attracts grace to a man's life grace does not just come because you think i need it or jesus died no there is an exact condition for grace to begin to flow in your life that requirement is what the bible calls surrender please hear me i hope you believe what i'm sharing with you what is happening to you right now is what we call liberty in the spirit many of you will walk out of this meeting and you will see that chains have left you not just by jacking up and down and you will not need to tell lies again that i am standing whereas something is wrong supply of the spirit grace grace so you are struggling with drunkenness and a man of god just tells you be born again it's all right no it's not all right surrender is the requirement to access the door of grace that the bible says come boldly does not mean come with arrogance come realizing the fact that the mercy of jesus christ has created the platform for you to receive of that grace hallelujah and so he supplies that strength when you are surrendered and you come to him and you say lord i'm tired of carnality my prayer life is dead if you do not help I, I try to pray lord you know that within me go to verse 20 let's start from there let's see what paul is saying within me the bible says the spirit is willing but this body that holds the spirit has a law 
that is at work in it. Now, if I do that, I would not. It is no more I. Okay, go to 18. There's something that I'm looking for. Can we hurry up? I want us to pray. Look at me. For I know that in me, that is my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. He said, for to will is present with me. Is that not the condition of many Christians? Have you seen people smoke and at the end they tell you honestly, I don't like this. Have you seen people like that? Have you seen even people go to the bed of fornication and a lady came to just talk to me, open up and when they finish whatever it is that they did, they had to pray there. They had to pray there. What does that tell you? That means that there is sincerity in their heart and that's a sign that you have met Jesus. Because if you have not met Jesus, that check of the spirit will not even be there. Are you getting what I'm saying, please? So men of God now tell people, you mean you slept with so, so and so person? And the person says, man of God, it's not like I don't love God. You see why a pastor can be sleeping with a lady? It's not like he's not born again. Are you getting what I'm saying? But Paul is saying to will that desire, if it is from a human perspective, I will never want to do anything bad. However, there is an influence beyond my will. And so I must tap to a higher supply. That's what we call grace. For to will is present with me. But he says, how to perform that which is good. That's where the ability does not come. So the true picture of what we call today the law is trying to do this second part. Now there is willingness. And you now say I'm using willpower. And there are many ways to use that willpower. You can use willpower. Come. If I'm supposed to hug this lady. Ah! No, 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 no. Why? That's, that's willpower. You see that? So you are feeling that if I hug this lady right now. You are saying ah! This is carnality. That's not carnality. It's a sign that the true grace of God has not found expression. Bless you. Grace is an ability. I want your mindset about grace to change. Grace is not just speaking over your life and say you can pass. Uh -uh. There are two dimensions. There is a part of grace that does not require any doing on your part. It just requires an acknowledgement. The name of that acknowledgement is surrender. But there is another dimension of grace that empowers you to play your spiritual responsibility. If you get this, then your grace message is accurate and balanced. I plan for us to finish on time today. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. See, God is speaking to us tonight. Enough of struggling enough of struggling there is a fountain of true grace that can take you beyond the grip of the flesh mm. hear me there is a fountain of power supplied by the agency of the spirit that can make men live like gods upon the earth until that becomes a reality you will think everyone talking about it is lying hear me if i used to let me use sorry i keep using these things i use them because i'm speaking apostolically are you getting my point now it's not just to keep hammering our minds but let me use the concept of immorality because that's what is really prevalent assuming before i gave my life to jesus christ i used to sleep around are you getting my point that was normal question do you think if i get born again i will just forget those memories tell me the truth Two, if I used to watch pornography, I mean real watch pornography, and I get born again, do you think that your brain is just daft that those things will reset? Those pictures are still there. What makes them kill you is a power that activates them. That's what is called the power of sin. When the power of sin is broken, memories, pictures, and whatever loses its hold. In other words, it cannot push you to act out its desires again. Are you getting what I'm saying now? So if I walk outside, 
and I see a nude lady, the normal response as a man is to be um, emotionally attracted and want to sleep with her. But that only happens because the power of sin is like fertilizer. It fertilizes anything that comes upon it. Are you getting what I'm saying now? The power of sin is not necessarily sin itself. The power of sin is a demonic agency that gives strength to the life of sin. So if I'm a drunkard, when the power of sin comes, that drunkenness becomes uncontrolled. That's why I can't stop it. Are you getting my point? So it is true that many people who preach and say the solution to man's problem is that the power of sin be broken. But they didn't explain it to us well. They, are con they didn't make sin. They just said sin like stop fornication, stop this. Sin is a very serious spiritual discussion. There is a power that sponsors it. When that power is broken over your life, the reality of the life of the Christ finds expression. So that you can see a lady that should physically lure you and want you to think some thoughts and you can appreciate her and say, wow, pretty lady, wonderful lady. And someone looks at you and says, is that all? Tell the truth, that's all. That is all. That's all because... See, <laughs> you're laughing. This is a possibility many people have not come into in the body of Christ. So, they even laugh at the possibility. Is it really, really possible? Even in Nigeria, it is possible. Even on campus, it is possible. Hallelujah. Trying to solve the sin problem by religiously running away will not solve. You can, I'm sorry to say it, and please don't think that I'm talking about churches and the rest, but you can drive somebody out of your church for not dressing well, but you won't drive the person from the street for not dressing well. Is that true? You will see the exact thing you were running away from. And your mind will help you remove the remaining part of the clothes. So you see somebody half dressed. I say, I close it. Your mind and say, thank you. This is all I want. You have, you have now come into my office. Who is lying to who in the body of Christ? Tap into a higher supply. One day we, a pretty lady was passing and I was looking at her. And one of my brothers looked at me and said, Ah, apostle. And I said, you are covering my view. <laughs> Let me look at... <laughs> you see. Because to the pure, all things are pure. You have come to a point in the spirit where all things are truly pure. When last did you generously appreciate the lady sitting near you and you went back home and slept soundly? Just said, Kai... You are pretty God is ah God is at work. This is this is a gift. And then the power of sin could not prevail in your life. Now the problem is once you see her, because your mind was designed to snap, the power of sin looks for what to do with that picture. And so it starts searching. What do we do? Call her, say something, and because you are a slave to sin, your body will act out the desire sponsored by that power. Say, my dear, can we meet in Kaduna? That's what happened. You see that most of these big men, they are slaves to sin. They just see a lady pass. You See, you can know how much a man is helpless to sin. Some of us brothers were like that, but God is helping us. You can't see any lady and ah, just tap your brother. You have it's not myself it's not just to tell yourself to behave it's to say lord something must be broken tonight hallelujah that power of sin broken 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 hallelujah nine o'clock when the power of sin is broken over your life you will experience the same thing those of you who have seen people being delivered right at least you've seen people who've been prayed for here and when you pray for them after they get up they tell you ah i feel light i feel something has left me that's exactly what happens when the power of sin is broken all of a sudden you will now see the true you and what you would have done naturally 
and what was sponsored by hell all of a sudden you say i always knew it i knew that i'm not just a womanizer there is something wicked now this is the real me i can now serve god in righteousness now i know that i don't just have you seen people who take beer they go to a beer parlor they take just two bottles and they are drunk that's the power of sin are you getting my point they they no matter what happens they must get there and when they take two bottles then they become victims of it they can sponsor someone else people can take even half crate but they must just go and respond to it how many of you have seen that when you are fasting you want to break that fast with anything even if it's sweet question will sweet satisfy you let's i mean uh what they call it fix if fix lemon plus on a normal day if you come to my house and i give you vix lemon plus on a tray won't you be angry i mean you came and said i'm hungry now you fasted till three o'clock and that that nature is fighting take anything take anything it's not just see let me tell you on a normal day there are days that you didn't eat food but you were not fasting nothing happened that's to tell you that normally you were just busy maybe you went to the office or for those of us working or you had lectures and you just found ah 5 30 and there is a test maybe by six and you still stayed you came back eight o'clock and you didn't even feel anything you drank tea and you said okay, tomorrow let me fast seven o'clock your body is shaking seven one hour after that declaration your body is saying uh -uh. let me round up this series with what I call the keys to experiencing higher dimensions of God's power and glory. The keys to experiencing higher dimensions of God's power. Please take this seriously. It will change your life. Those of us in ministry, it will change your ministry and it will change everything about you. Number one, prayer and fasting. I'm going to go straight to the point and not waste your time isaiah 40 and then luke chapter 4 verse 1 and 2 for time's sake i want us to pray let's see luke chapter 4 at least but write isaiah 40 and you read from verse maybe 27 down talks about they that wait upon the lord what does the bible say will happen it said they shall renew renew their strength they will mount up with wings as what eagles they will run and when humanly speaking they are supposed to be tired there is a higher supply that sustains them they will walk and they will not faint this is a possibility ordinarily when you walk you should be tired when you walk you should faint but when you tap into this supply of the spirit all of a sudden you will see that when men are getting tired you are still on the move there is a spiritual system that sustains continuity this is the secret to a consistent spiritual life so that issue of up and down you pray for eight hours today and then you can't pray for 12 minutes tomorrow something is wrong and jesus being full of the holy ghost returned from jordan and was led by the spirit into where the wilderness next verse please being 40 days tempted of the devil and in those days he did eat nothing and when the days were were finished or were ended he was hungered now i'm just trying to tell you that after the baptism of jesus he went straight to go and fast and pray please and please i want you to learn this tonight if you want to step into higher levels of grace higher levels of spiritual dimension i read the story of a man who wanted to invoke the devil and see the devil and they gave him a condition in your called real story that he would fast for 11 months and in that 11 months he would not sleep in the afternoon and he will only break in the night if you could satisfy that condition he will invoke the devil and he did when he was six months he was tired one day and he forgot and he slept in the afternoon and he had to start again 
But after 11 months, Lucifer appeared to him. Because that, that fasting for that time is like you are pressing a spiritual code. Suddenly, Lucifer appeared and said, you asked for it. I'm here. So what is the thing? And he started asking him a lot of questions. One Yoruba man, what's his name? I can't remember now. Omar Bajesu or something like that. That's that man. This is what happens in the demonic realm. Right? When you fast and pray, that is when you will see the other dimension of grace I'm talking about. Not just that it is done for you, but your fasting and prayer now brings you to that spiritual alignment. Are you getting my point? Fasting and prayer, I've said it, fasting and prayer does not bring miracles. Fasting and, power and, and prayer does not in itself bring power. Fasting and prayer, as far as I'm concerned, solves one issue, unbelief. It brings your capacity to a point where you can understand and align appropriately so that spiritual things will begin to happen in your life. Verse 14. Let's rush to verse 14. So Jesus went to fast and pray. Not fast and sleep. Not fast and gist. Many of us start what we call fasting. I'm telling you the truth from God's perspective. is hunger strike. He said, is this not a fast I have commanded? That means there is a kind of fast. You know, we do a lot of religious things and we want people to see. They say, come and eat. And you say, ah, ah, this is my 11th day. I've been fasting. Who cares? Just don't disturb us. If you are fasting, it's between you and God. Must you tell us it's 11 days? Um, well, when I get to the 15th day, I'll start taking water. If you like fast for one million days, that's your cup of tea. But I'm telling you that fasting is a personal affair. It's doing something to your spiritual man. Brothers and sisters, if you do not fast, there are some dimensions you may never enter spiritually. Now, verse 14, it says, And Jesus returned. After fasting, what happened? He returned in the power. Notice, he was filled with the Holy Ghost, but we did not see the power of the Spirit. But after fasting and praying, the power of the Spirit was at work. You see the difference? He had the presence of the Holy Ghost. But he probably would not do any signs and wonders. So the Bible says it this way. Acts 10, 38. How God anointed Jesus first with the Holy Ghost at the baptism. Second, with power when he went to fast. The place of prayer and fasting is the place where you contact true spiritual power. Acts chapter 4 verse 31. Please let's rush. Acts 4 31. We saw this in the life of the apostles. So even in the New Testament. Fasting and prayer. Was part of the church. Let's look up. Um, okay well. Here just talks about prayer. But there's a place where they fasted and prayed. He said and when they had prayed. What happened? The place was shaken. It's as much as possible add your to your prayer fasting it's like adding fuel to fire your prayer life will be richer when you fast while they separated themselves and they prayed and fasted the holy ghost spoke to them fasting brings you to a point prayer and fasting brings you to a point where the voice of the spirit comes crystal clear upon your spirit man crystal clear the encumbrances that dwell in the realm of the flesh are now swallowed up because you see the flesh is only active when there is food there is a relationship between food and this realm and when it crosses its boundary it empowers the flesh the place were shaken and they were assembled together and they were all filled with the holy ghost and they spake the word of god with boldness fasting gives you boldness fasting and prayer gives you boldness let me tell you we have seen this in this house there are many people who came if you see somebody who is weak and if you are suffering from inferiority let me tell you the antidote pray go and join the prayer band for one month stretch in tongues every day and see how the spirit of boldness swallows up fear and timidity I've seen people who, the first time I met, some of them will not even be able to look at you. But after a season of prayer, 
that weight just breaks down because God helps you. Even our little children that you see here, look at the boldness in all of them because of the ministry of prayer. You do Bible study without prayer, forget about boldness. Let me guarantee you, forget about boldness. I was teaching the school of ministry students and I tell them, if you are about starting a ministry, start it first as a prayer meeting, not a Bible study fellowship. I know it looks religious, the word, word, pray. You will never truly pray and forget the word of God. Let me tell you the truth. If you make spiritual contact, eventually you will stop and consider the word. But you can sit down with tea and, and coffee and say, okay, let's consider now the book of Colossians and somebody is just snoring. The pathway to death. And a time will come where once there is no activity of the spirit, the flesh will start coming in. You see, the only one who will share, Benga, we are tired of your face. So, ah, give Lillian flesh. Look at a church that prays. They are men of power. Look at a ministry that prays. Look at a family that prays. There are some, family that, some families that really pray. Thank God for some of our mothers. No matter how tired you are, five o'clock, you're already hearing worship in the parlor. The meaning of that is wake up. And when you were growing up, some of us insulted our parents because we did not understand. Watch this. Today you thank God because there are some histories that will never be associated with your life. Not because you were nice in yourself. Prayer bailed you out. He said, watch and pray that you will not fall into temptation. Brothers, you see the key? watch and pray so that you will not be sitting down somebody tells you let's go and visit one of my friends the moment you are going police will just put you inside black maria and say let's go they did stealing around he said no no i'm just coming out they say you go and explain it in the station watch and pray it gives you discernment how many people have been jailed for doing nothing because they could not walk circumspectly Prayer and fasting. One key that will bring heaven's dimension to operate in your life. There is no exact formula for praying and fasting. But I encourage people generally, it is my personal spiritual growth principle that your prayer and fasting life should be at least, at least once in for a start let's say once in two weeks i fast at least once in a week at least and that's all right you don't need to fast six times in seven days not necessarily if you're on a program that's okay but incorporate it not as one religious thing after you fast for 21 days you die for the remaining part of the year no let it be part of your spiritual growth Please, just do what I'm telling you. Even if it is religiously, just do it. And see what happens to your spirit now. Hallelujah. At least once a week. Huh? You can use the day you are sure you won't cook well. Or where there's no nice food. If you fast on Sunday, you are looking for trouble. If God instructs you, fast. Otherwise, you can... And don't just fast the day when you, are, you want to sleep. And then you fast and sleep. And then it just so happens that you woke up and it was 4.30. And then you just prayed a little and still played koinonia message and slept. And you woke up 5 minutes to 6. You started peeling orange, banana and the rest. You didn't fast accurately. You won't maximize the spiritual blessings. Praise the Lord. You fasted and the whole day you were cooking. What you eat in the evening. That's not fast. It's not fast. Number two. Very rich and consistent word study life. You want the glory of God to be multiplied upon your life. You must have a robust, rich and consistent word study life. Rich what study life let me encourage everyone here you can meet media i think they have i listen to the whole bible um every month i may not be able to read it 
Do you know that you can read one book in, in 15 minutes? I mean, you can listen odd on audio. Are you getting my point? The truth is, the probability for you to wake up every morning and do devotionals from 5 to 8 is almost zero. Except you want to become an irresponsible worker in your place of work. If I employ you and you come back by 12 and I ask you what you were doing, you say, I was touching heaven. You are out. You are out. Now, there are many believers. Let me balance this. There are many believers that use spirituality to refuse to be productive. They employed you to come and walk. You prayed from 5 till 11. It is good, but you are not wise. So create a system just the same way you read your book and you study in school. I don't do that. I'm telling you the truth. I don't have that time every day at a particular time to study as much as I want. And so I have all kinds of systems that are put in place. Hallelujah. There are times that I'm traveling and the time to travel is 5 a.m. in the morning. Are, are you getting my point now? You can sit down and miss your flight and tell them <laughs> I'm, I'm a pastor. That's your cup of tea. Well, pastor, buy your jet or buy your, your, your plane or, or trust God to move like Philip. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are times that there are certain things in your life that are time tagged. I wake up that and sometimes I wake up maybe 15 minutes to 5. What can you really do in 15 minutes? I'm just bathing and praying in tongues. And quickly, I'm playing. I have audio Bible. Everyone say audio Bible. It's a big blessing that can transform your life. I'm giving you a secret. I believe that media has audio Bible. It's free. Go and get it. Buy a flash. Buy all of this. Buy a bigger memory card. Remove nonsense from your phone and add direct Bible. Praise the Lord. And you are listening to it. Sometimes try listening to it and sleep. You will find out that while your spirit is sleeping, it's picking the signals of that scripture. How many of you listen to messages and you know while you are sleeping, the message is still playing? You are well aware. Let me tell you, that thing is not little. There is a mighty level of translation happening because at that point, your body is sleeping. The biggest problem of your spiritual growth is asleep. And so the Holy Ghost can quickly maximize that opportunity and cover ground before you wake up. I'm, I'm telling you this. Oh yes, I'm telling you this. That's why it is while men sleep that the devil comes to plant tears. Not while men are awake. While men sleep. There is a mystery of sleep. As you sleep, most times, I don't just sleep silent. It doesn't mean that if you have roommates, let me balance it now. You just get a little speaker and just put something and you disturb people. God gave us, he brought technology to help us grow. Get an earphone. A rich word study life. The Bible on the go. The Bible on the go. There are times that all these short, short chapters, Jude, James, you can just combine all of them. Huh? And within an hour, you have listened. Faith comes by hearing. Literally comes by hearing. You can use devotionals. Devotionals. It may not be the ultimate source of your spiritual growth, but please don't trivialize devotionals. It's a good way of starting. There are many ministries that have devotionals. Many ministries. Some of our churches have it. Buy. Humble yourself and, and, and let it direct and guide you. Number three. There are special Bibles that have Bible study plans. Is that true? God has helped a lot of people and they have put different Bible study plans. One year plan, two year plan. You can, you can take advantage of it. Whatever you will do, you must design a systemic way of study consistently. I study as the spirit leads will not help you. It's not even the spirit that is leading to that kind of confusion. So the day you just feel like, you say, okay, where do I study now? You know, let me tell you, this flesh is a dangerous thing. You turn to the book of Matthew, nothing. Jeremiah, Jeremiah 12, what will I now study? You open again Leviticus. 
you know all these kinds of things you open to the gospel you open to revelation you are afraid you close it back and at the end of it you don't study anything constructively you must study and then beyond study you must allow the word of god to grow in you it's not enough just to study you must live by the principles of the word number three okay let me give you a scripture for the second timothy chapter three second timothy chapter three from verse one to seventeen the verse of emphasis is from fourteen to seventeen second timothy chapter three from verse one but specifically from verse fourteen to seventeen you can also back up your word study life with rich christian materials oga jordan is there jordan bookstore is open there are all kinds of rich books that can help to back you up carry five thousand carry ten thousand if you can eat food of ten thousand and you cannot buy a spiritual material of ten thousand you are the second man we are talking about that's carnality hallelujah number three fellowship with the spirit through intense worship you want to experience heaven fellowship with the spirit through worship by worship i mean employing the agency of music listen you will never encounter the glory of god if you ignore the place of worship in your life that's why sometimes you see that they are playing this and well it's not just that we want to make noise it's an atmosphere i preached a message years ago called the law of atmosphere when you create the atmosphere for the holy ghost to come you will experience his presence mightily hallelujah worship my my phones are full of all kinds of worship songs some i'm just sitting and i just go on youtube the best worship songs and i look for them i download them i convert them to mp3s straight to my phone and i just lie down and sometimes especially those times when there's no light when your eyes cannot see anything you just play that worship song and you are lost you are in another realm hallelujah and all of a sudden you literally begin to sense the shekinah presence of god in your room when you keep doing that eventually your room becomes an altar an altar is a place where consistent sacrifice is made your room becomes a portal hallelujah if you plan to build create a section in your room and call it your altar with god the threshing floor hmm. some people is the bathroom your toilet and, and trust me it's a good idea for as long as he's building your spiritual life at least nobody will harass you there and you just lock the place and you are lost in worship it's not like you are easing yourself you just need some time for yourself some of us the garage that they are not using you just find one old mattress and throw down there and you lie down sweet spirit i submit to you and you are worshiping and you are just praying in tongues and i tell you if you go online there are all kinds of worship there, there's jazz worship strong prophetic jazz worship no words your tongues will be the words there are instrumentations like this just play and guys you can do something like this and package it why not do something like that to help the body of christ no ministry you are just creative you are contributing to the body of christ and you'll be blessed and rewarded for it both financially and otherwise that's an idea god is giving someone imagine that you have this that you are hearing take it to your room he says oh lord you are my god early will i seek you my soul longs for you to see your power and your glory as i have seen in the sanctuary take your experience of the sanctuary to your secret place and you're just worshiping Ah, hello and you invite your husband your wife let the children sleep in the presence of god see if you are married here don't leave your children behind 
while you're worshiping drag them the bible said train not discuss train drag them come and put the mattress let them sleep in the glory eli was um samuel was sleeping close to the ark but he still had the voice of god at least sleep but sleep close to the ark some of our little ones are sleeping now they are sleeping in the presence of god let them remain here you don't lose in the presence of god is god helping someone here all of a sudden you find out that there are times you may not have the grace to pray but there is the grace to worship switch from there and you're just singing and sometimes it may just be one song has that happened to you any other song you raise your spirit will reject it because that one song is the communication of what the spirit is doing in your life at that moment it could even just be a phrase ah, ah, elohim any other song will not connect with your spirit ah, 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 and five minutes turns to ten minutes and there is a supply of strength after 10 minutes you thought you will be tired but right now you have broken the barrier 30 minutes you are still worshiping while you're worshiping your body is telling you all kinds of nonsense are you sure you are not busy you know you have lecture ah, 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 ah. hello him while that is happening you are just talking and the flesh is the flesh is reacting to the worship keep worshiping keep worshiping that's why people get tired easily in church the flesh is fighting fighting your rise into a realm the secret is to keep that body there keep the body in the glory and it will start changing a time will come like you tame a horse the body will submit to the dealings of the spirit all of a sudden while you're worshiping at a point you will find out scriptures begin to come mm, his majesty has stepped in scriptures all of a sudden god begins to speak to you some of us in the midst of that worship when it gets deep the spirit of prophecy oftentimes initiates the coming of the holy ghost all of a sudden prophecy comes and you begin to prophesy you are just praying in tongues you are in the presence alone with him all of a sudden you will start answering your own questions by yourself another spirit the spirit of christ has taken over you're praying all of a sudden you find out the pain is gone completely gone you're praying all of a sudden you find out that you could not sleep because you saw seven carryovers and he said what have i been doing in school and in that presence and the scripture starts coming fear not i have redeemed you i have called you by name you are mine when you walk through the water i will be with you through the river it will not consume you when you walk through the fire all of a sudden courage is arising you have exams but you've not read anything but in the glory you're worshiping you're a man of God you are preparing for your meeting and there is nothing to do see this is how I prepare for koinonia those who know me especially for the miracle service ah I come and I lie down flat and there's heavy worship well selected selected by spiritual wisdom and I just play it and I increase the volume enough to frustrate my body and I lie down there and as the glory comes all of a sudden visions are open and sometimes i'm seeing the things that will happen in the meeting let me stop there fellowship with the spirit in the place of worship the holy ghost loves singing when you sing to him whether in the spirit or in understanding you attract his presence notice every man of god that moves heavily in the anointing whether he has a good voice or not there is an affinity to music and deep worship i will follow the lion i will follow the lamb i will serve the lion i will serve the lamb the last point before we pray 
my goodness what is this that I'm seeing in the spirit I'm literally smelling a fragrance in the spirit literally literally I'm smelling a fragrance with my physical nostrils when you begin to smell things in the spirit it is called the spirit of discernment there's no time to teach you this but it is a manifestation of the spirit of discernment there are times many of you begin to pray and as you go deep you start smelling things scents in the spirit these were ancient davidic patterns of worship the mysteries of the keys of david spiritual formulas that were used to invoke the presence of god hmm. number four the sacrifice of a pure and a holy life the sacrifice of a pure and a holy life you want to see heavy dimensions of God's power and glory you cannot downplay the place of true holiness Colossians chapter 3 verse 2 by sacrifice there are certain things you will even need to cut they may not be wrong but you may have to cut them movies associations there are some things you may have to cut for the excellency of that which you want to gain in the spirit you cannot eat your cake and have it in the spirit believe me okay let me give you two more scriptures first thessalonians 5 22 first thessalonians 5 22 hurry up psalm 24 verse 3 and 4 who shall ascend to the hill of the lord he that has clean hands and a pure heart and then second corinthians 6 verse 7 all these scriptures point towards the fact that a life of purity and holiness has a lot to do with the presence of god resting and remaining upon your life the bible says come out from among them and be ye separate touch not the unclean thing you must create boundaries in your life brothers and sisters do these four things again and again in your life and watch a giant in the spirit arise i don't care what the limitations are now fast and pray without compromise invest quality materials invest in the world invest in quality materials concordances in your uh, uh, bible concordances and so on and so forth take bible at least if you can lay your hands on get rich spiritual materials number three fellowship with the spirit in the place of worship you can buy a keyboard buy a keyboard or buy juice five for life Come and give. Um, what's his name? Timmy. I almost said Ayo. Buy five for life and give to me. And say to me, just play this for me while I record for 30 minutes. Here is the honorarium for investing your gift in my spiritual growth. And you're just playing it and soaking in the spirit. We are going to pray. We have 10 minutes to pray. There's no prayer point. We're just going to pray and cry in the spirit. Hallelujah. Gaining spiritual stature. Please everyone participate in this prayer. I see people standing outside. It's an opportunity to pray. Hallelujah. In the next five minutes, we're going to blast in tongues. We are going to cry unto God. Some of you, all you will need to do is just to lie down and let this worship just soak into you. Whatever you have to do, you have five minutes. Go ahead and let's do it. Oh, sing in the spirit. Oh, 
Come on, build capacity in the spirit. Build strength in the spirit. Let the power of sin break over our lives in the name of the Lord Jesus. We rise from the grip of the flesh, from the grip of carnality, from the grip of the limitations of the flesh. Come on, press a little more for a few minutes. Lord, ignite a fire in us. Ignite a fire upon our spirits. We tap into the supply of grace. The supply of grace. The supply of grace. We rise beyond the flesh. We rise beyond the grip of the flesh. We are free from the lust of the eyes. We are free from the lust of the flesh. We are free from the pride of life. The affinity for material things dies away from our life. The affinity for this world and all that it has to offer loses its grip upon our life. We become spiritual men, spiritually minded, spiritually minded. Even in prosperity, we are spiritually minded. In excellence, we are spiritually minded. When God blesses us, we are spiritually minded. We have no affinity to blessings. We receive them. We use them. But we are never attached to them. Our attachment, our love, our commitment is to the Lord Most High and the purposes of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I pray for you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Everything that has corrupted your Christian experience, everything that you have struggled with, in the name of Jesus, this system of the Spirit will lift you above the grip of the flesh. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Therefore I break the power of sin over your life. Sin has no dominion over you. In the name of Jesus Christ. The power of sin that leads men to fornication. The power of sin that leads men to pride. The power of sin that leads men to gluttony. The power of sin that brings prayerlessness. 
the power of sin that brings carelessness in spiritual things i command in the name of jesus christ that that grip that hold of sin is broken over your life now i declare that you are alive unto righteousness you are alive unto true holiness in the name of jesus christ hallelujah i command that by the activity of the holy ghost upon your life let sickness be far from you you rise to a realm where ss can truly now change to aa you rise to a realm where infirmity can no longer dwell in your mortal body you rise in the spirit to a realm where curses and spells and yokes and enchantments can no longer have a grip upon you you rise to a level where there is a limitless supply of wisdom limitless supply of power limitless supply of strength this teaching brings you to a realm where god begins to do business through your hands i pray for you by the anointing of the holy ghost your hands that are lifted may they be instruments of signs and wonders in the name of jesus christ i release the anointing of the holy ghost upon these hands that are lifted from today lay hands on the sick and watch them get healed from today i put fire upon your mouth i command in the name of jesus makato sekete lekata mambrate kete kete tete rekete kete reke boshota mambrate ka ekotoskopa mambrekete lekototo pekete ebratoskopa mekete patata power comes upon your life power comes upon your life power comes upon your life i administer the supply of the spirit upon you i administer the supply of grace i administer the supply of strength i administer a new order of miracles a new order of signs a new order of wonders a new order of favor a new order of the manifestation of the holy ghost receive grace for the manifestation of the holy ghost everywhere you go everywhere you preach begin to see a demonstration of the holy ghost matatakata you will pray for men they will be filled with the holy ghost your roommates will be filled with the holy ghost in the name of jesus you become an agency a container of spiritual power you become a bank of spiritual power i invoke this from the heavens let it come upon your life i place the word of god upon your spirit man i stamp your life with the word of god hallelujah and i prophesy upon your life that everything that was impossible i declare that now that you have risen to a new spiritual plane i activate possibilities in the spirit now hear me there are many of you that have never seen visions before but in this new plane in the spirit i open your eyes now i open your eyes now i open your eyes now ay 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 I open your eyes now to visions in the spirit. I open your eyes. Let the spirit of prophecy come upon as many, as many, not prophetic office, not the office, the manifestation. Start hearing God. Hear the voice of the spirit with clarity. I tune your spirit to the frequency where the voice of god will thunder and echo upon your spirit without restraint hallelujah i declare that this house becomes a place where men of the spirit are raised 
in the name of Jesus many of you will sleep tonight and the Lord will give you divine solutions he will show you what to do about your family problem he will show you what to do about your academic problem hallelujah now very quickly before we take the announcement lift your hands let me speak over your exams by next week many of us are starting our exams father in a way you have never done before i know that you hear me when i pray and i'm asking you to do something strange in this house reveal questions to people before they get to exam halls i ask this as a request in the name of the lord jesus there are people this is what you need to graduate by the mercy of the lord most high in the name of jesus i impart upon you grace to study i speak to your cgpa cgpa it's time to hear the word of the lord it's time to rise high it's time to rise high those of you under probation by prophecy we bail you out of probation in the name of the lord jesus christ i command excellence in your exams those who did not do well in your assessment i pray for you in the name of jesus you will see the wonders of god as you write your exams no script will be missing in the name of jesus i declare for many of you who the lecturers have had a track record of failing people this time around because your turn has come the heart of a king is in the hands of the lord i declare that their hearts are turned for your favor turn for your favor hallelujah as you study may the lord reward you in the name of the lord jesus very quickly you are here and you've never given your life to jesus christ you have not made a commitment before we continue i'd like to give you an opportunity we've spoken about three kinds of men probably you just walked into this meeting or you have been walking doing the things of god but you are saying i'm tired of my life i want a new beginning you may have even given your life to christ but you found yourself derailing you just found out that because of some kind of pressure you have left the way of the lord i'm giving you an opportunity wherever you are right now please in the next few seconds i'd like you to run and come out i like to lead you to jesus christ wherever you are i'll just count one to four one hallelujah don't be ashamed don't be afraid don't wait for anybody if there is anyone like that you're welcome backsliders those who want to give their hearts to the lord god bless you there are people coming hallelujah praise the lord hallelujah i see someone coming god bless you don't sit back don't wait for anybody god bless you celebrate them please make way clear the way for them clear the way for them clear the way jesus is calling you into a new experience don't sit back when you hear the voice of the lord he calls you to bless you he calls you to change you hallelujah praise the lord thank you so much for coming i love you from the depth of my heart i celebrate you for this great decision i'd like you to lift your voice and say after me lord jesus i surrender totally to your lordship i believe that you are lord of my life i declare that my sins are forgiven you give me a new start beginning from today the power of sin is broken over my life from today the past is gone and everything becomes new i'm a child of god i'm born again let me pray for you father preserve these ones i pray every legal hold the devil has over their lives i command it and i declare it broken right now i decree and i declare that you will make giants out of them both in this life and in the spirit in the name of the lord jesus christ whatever is not of god i take authority over it in your life and i declare that you will walk in true freedom and liberty in jesus name thank you so much for taking this bold step i'd like you to just follow the usher waving his hands they'll have your dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. 
subscribe to the channel, comment on it, like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.